Um, it is seven o'clock on Thursday, February 16, 2023, and I will call the Finance Committee meeting to order. I'm Sarah Mellish, the chair. I have to the left of me, Tom Parkins and Dean Nottis. To the right of me, I have Peter Twining and Andy Olderman and, and Mike Pratt. I expect Maury will be joining us shortly. Um, Gail Hunter is taking minutes remotely. Um, the first item on the agenda is the budget review of the Public Health Department operating along with the staffing update. Um, last year, we had um, talked about adding a position and instead of putting it in the budget, it was in the ARPA funds because we weren't sure what was going to happen. Um, so we're looking for an update on what has happened and um, then to just go through the budget. You did send us a two-page summary of the various um, the, uh, responsibilities that you have. So if somebody would like to just give us an update, that would be great. Thank you for your support last year. We certainly appreciate it. We hope. Can you move forward a little and talk into that microphone? Say who you want. See the red line, green lines? No. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, I want to thank you for your support last year and uh, hope to give you confidence that your decision was a good one. Um, as you wisely pointed out, we, we were not able to get a, a hire for July 1st. Um, the hire came in, Wendy came um, mid-November. Between that, the savings on the projected savings on the food inspection and the septic, um, we're going to return to break roughly $49,000 um, on the initiative's budget. The estimate is based on the last two years number of septic inspections. Obviously, it varies every year. Um, March tends to be septic season, <laughs> so we're heading into that. Um, I did. The other question you had was, fine, you have the staffing, and you told us what your responsibilities are, but can you be more specific? What do they do? And that is the sheet that we sent you today. Apologize, we probably should have sent it you a little earlier, but better late than never. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that these are the number of sites, not the number of visits. Okay, wow. it's not uncommon to have repeat visits, particularly in septic. And you'll see down at the bottom all of the things that are included in the septic requirement. Very seldom do we get a, a, a septic request that's stamped. See you later. I mean, it's usually, geez, you got to go back and do this, do that. Um, food is a little more straightforward, um, but they are repeat food. And we had a, a recent situation where a restaurant, the refrigeration was at the right temperature, but the thermometer was broken. So it was just dumb luck that it was at the right temperature. That required another visit after they had updated and they had to calibrate their thermometer with ours. So these numbers are not individuals. It's just to give you a broad idea of what's involved um, historically. And then I'm going to turn this over to Paula, and she's going to talk to you about what the extra staffing will allow us to do going forward, um, stuff that we had wanted to do, but just ran out of hours. Ma'am? Thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you. I'm Paula Polophilius, a co-chair of the Board of Health, and this is Wendy Hainsby, our new uh, health, health agent and public health director. And uh, we're, we're happy to have her. We're going through a lot of um, growth and learning. Uh, she's learning from us and we're learning from her. And uh, I think that we're really hitting, we'll be really hitting our stride 
at the right time of the year when everything starts to ramp up. And already uh, since Wendy's been here, uh, next week we'll have a public hearing to implement uh, new animal control regulations. Our animal control, almost all of the regulations in the Board of Health have not been updated in decades. Uh, we haven't had a, a, a part-time, We last time we had a health agent, it was part, they were part-time. This is the first time we actually have a full-time health agent and department head. So we're excited for what's to come. And uh, we're getting right to all of the um, items that we had hoped to accomplish. No, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. That's That's okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Go ahead. So um, our animal control regulations were uh, just not, they're just inaccurate. We were lumping um, cows together with horses in terms of how much room they need and what their requirements are in pastures. And so uh, those have been revised. And as I mentioned, the public hearing will be next week to um, hopefully, you know, vote them into, into being. And uh, Wendy is now working on uh, new well regulations. Uh, we know that uh, wells have been a big topic of conversation, especially with the drought that we had last summer. Uh, the new uh, well regulations will address water quality, uh, drought concerns, water use, amount type and impact. Um, it will have a update our record as to who has what, private wells, irrigation wells. We just want to get a handle on that because uh, it seems that water is a very big topic in this town and it uh, is getting more and more attention as we go. Um, we are also involved. Yeah, just one yes, of course. The, uh, the current private well regulation focuses on site location and construction. And it's silent after that. Now, if you're using it for irrigation, it probably doesn't matter. But there are a lot of wells that they're using for human and animal consumption. And there's no regulation on that water. So our first review is, should there be? What are other people doing? Um, septic, as you know, we require a report um, that you've had your septic inspected and pumped at least every five years. Should we do that with the private wells that are used for drinking water? Uh, those are things we're investigating that we never really had um, the chance to do before. And the other comment is that on the on the large animals, they the past regulation lumped in pigs, sheep, goats, cows, and horses. And now I'm not a farmer, I'm a city boy, but there's no way a pig needs as much gra grazing as a horse. <laughs> so we thought it was not defendable that we really needed to make uh, a situation where it was defendable, that we could justify what the regulation is. And we're lucky that nothing, there was never a challenge. The last two years, we had one raw request. We've had four in the last month. So there is a public interest and we need to protect the public, even if it's only a small minority. Mm -hmm. Sorry for no worries. No, please chime in. Uh, we, we're also we're actively involved in the emergency response uh, program. Before we weren't able to vote, we were only able to listen. We weren't able to actively participate in the regional emergency response because we did not have a health agent. But uh, since we do now, we can be more involved with that. And uh, uh, Wendy has kindly uh, created a needs assessment for us. And, you know, it, there's a lot, there's a lot of things, but I think we've touched upon, you know, what we do in the department, what we've been doing and how we can grow. And I guess maybe now's a good time to ask you if you have any more questions for us. Thank you. I would, I would just like to add one more mm -hmm. unknown. On March 3rd, EPA will be uh, publishing their rule on PFAS. It's highly likely that I will have to do something. What is not known, I think the regulation will come through the Board of Health and we can just pass it across the hall to DPW and 
stay out of it. I hope that's the way it goes, but we don't know. So that's kind of an unknown that may take hours um, of some kind of record keeping. And the sheet that I gave you does not include all the paperwork that goes on before, after, and during, nor does it include all the walk-ins that ask questions, phone calls, emails. There was no way for us to really give you any kind of an accurate feel for that, but it's a number of people per week. Thank you. What is the new regulation? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the term you used. PFAS. 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 What's that? That's a, uh, a forever chemical forever in the water that the EPA, by the way, they say it's it's uh, the testosterone uh, is a catalyst for this. So I suspect that men might be more interested in seeing this regulation than women, but then again, I don't want to be sexist. <laughs> Um, Can you you mentioned you said you returned forty nine thousand? Can you just explain? Yes, there was thirty two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars of unused salary. There was uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Was of, the thirty two thousand five hundred in ARPA funds or in yes, budget money? ARPA funds. Okay, thank you. Yes, sorry. So that's outside the budget. Okay. okay. So um, zero. Fifteen. Right. <laughs> fifteen hundred dollars of projected savings for the food inspection and $16,000 of projected savings from now to June in the septic. So roughly 17,500 on the other. Okay. We, had, we had subcontractors doing the work for us. We had an engineer doing the Title V uh, uh, plan review, soil testing observations, uh, site visits when the system's being built and a certificate of compliance when the system is complete. And we also had a separate contractor that went in and did all of the uh, food inspections or housing complaints or because they are different qualifications. We were very lucky to find Wendy because she has all those qualifications all wrapped up into a nice package. <laughs> Great. Um, do you, what's total fees generated yeah, within your wheelhouse so septic inspection fees restaurant fee for that um but we, i believe it's around 35 is that right right 32 to 35 thousand it's in that ballpark it is, is, the, the, is the biggest piece the septic or yes what uh how, do you know what the septic fee is or or how do we compare to other towns oh we're we're comparable we we bumped them up several years ago uh, to make them comparable to other towns. They're different fees for different things. I don't have the fee breakdown. Sure. And, I, and I think that one of the things we are asking departments to do who do have fees is to take a look at your costs and try to figure out whether it's appropriate to increase fees to better cover the costs. Right. I mean, to build on that, obviously, we, you know, no, nothing here is a for-profit corporation, but to the degree that, you know, there's some flexibility on raising these fees to help cover the costs. Mm -hmm. And especially since I got to believe, I use this phrase a lot, this is an inelastic demand curve for these septic inspection fees, right? Like, there's no choice, right? You have a septic system, got to get inspected, right? So um, it's probably willing to work with those fees. We would we'd be glad to present it to the board a second, but we can't set fees. We're not allowed to. So we'd be more than happy to pass on. Understood you can't set it, but certainly, you, like you said, you make a recommendation. Make a recommendation. You guys are closer to the market in terms of, right, what the fee range. So mm -hmm. I would encourage you to go down that road. Yep. So the remaining professional services of 10,000 in the budget, is that with respect to testing of the water in the ocean? Uh, yes. Yeah. So that's with respect to ocean testing. Everybody. Okay. Any other questions from the board? No, I have. Yes, Dean. On the PFAS testing, do you coordinate with the DPW all at what they're doing on the municipal? Well, as far as I'm, I'm on, you the, have oversight or some kind of. The 
the, D, the DPW gives us a year end report yeah. on all of the testing, all of the chemicals that we review and sign off on before they submit it to the DEP. <clears throat> I'm on the, I'm also on the water resource committee thing in the So they're working on a solution. What's the, what's the most cost effective solution if we are mandated on March 3rd to do something with the water? And uh, the information we're getting is that it would be a, a miracle if we weren't. Okay. Um, so I'm working with, DPW would chuck on a variety of water related issues, the PFA testing being obviously the most urgent right now. And we are looking, by the way, one of the I'm sorry, one of the <clears throat> options that is under the inspection, which could be really, really cost effective, is to take the money that's already allocated to replace our 125 year old pipes. <clears throat> And go down Pine Street and then use that trench to connect the Lincoln Street well with wherever we farm so that we don't need to build a 12, 10, 12,000 dollar treatment plant between two schools. A million dollars. Yeah. So, yes, that would cost money to run pipes up there, but it'd be a lot less expensive. And that takes, would take care of both water sources, not just one. And the way it does that is then the water that goes from Lincoln to... It would go from Lincoln. Lincoln only puts chemicals in the water. They don't filter it. See? The treatment plant up at Gravelly treats and there. filters. There. So to, to change out the filter medium, you're all sitting. There's $500,000 a year if it's got the PFAS in it. So we're, the thought was, well, we could pump the water up to Gravelly Pond, treat it, pump it back down yeah. to the pumping system that's at Lincoln Street Well. So we have the distribution mm -hmm. that we currently have now. We won't need auxiliary pumps. We won't need another water tower. Um, so that, I think, is gaining a lot of interest. Thank you. Um, Nate DeRoches, I see you have your hand raised. You might have some input on the subject matter. <laughs> yeah, so uh, regarding the testing, uh, Woodard and Curran, who operates the treatment plant, conducts the monthly testing for us. Um, and so they send it to, previously we were doing two labs uh, for split sampling uh, because one lab was coming in a fair bit higher than the other lab. Um, and so to meet our limit, uh, we wanted to make sure we kind of had both samples going. Um, but we're going to move forward with the uh, lab that's coming in a bit lower now since we've been doing that for about a year. Um, I think it's a bit premature to start talking about kind of the alternative solutions. Um, you know, there we're just starting to explore those and there's going to be a lot of different uh, avenues we have to look at. Um, Peter is correct that, you know, one possibility is to uh, pipe the Lincoln Street well up to the treatment plant. Um, but we'd also have to do some form of booster station to make up for the uh, loss of uh, pressure that we would get from pumping directly into the system at Lincoln Street for the east side of town. Um, so very much it's, uh, it's things that Chuck and I are starting to look into, um, but you know, it, it's definitely, there's a lot of unknowns out there and you know, from treatment, uh, what we're gonna have to add, what we would have to add at the treatment plant uh, to treat it and how we do that. So it's, it's um, yeah. We'll, we'll wait till things are a little more definitive. Thank yep. you. <laughs> um, any questions on the budget? Do I have a motion to approve the health department budget in the amount of 196,553? Peter. Uh, Peter moves, Maury, you second? second. A roll call vote. Maury? Yes. Andy? Yes. Peter? Yes. Tom? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Sarah votes yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. See you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to
the, excuse me. Um, the next um, item on the agenda is the library operating and capital budget. It is on page. Well, you guys have it good. I don't need to look it up on my little list. Okay. So there's people from the library here. Um, I believe the capital item was one that we proved the portion attributable to the CPC, and there's a 50% match mm -hmm. in the town. And I think you're prepared to answer questions on that. Um, are there any questions from the board with respect to the overall budget? Line items on the budget. We have the perennial issue on the amount of the books and magazines. My understanding is that that's tied to the overall budget. So I don't quite understand if the budget's increasing by two and a half percent, why the books are increasing by 3.6, why they can't be 2.5. It's math. <laughs> In order to qualify for state aid, um, which we do every year and it's very supportive, um, you have to spend a per certain percentage of your overall budget on books and materials. It just happens when you, I think it's like 19% of the overall budget. So when the budget goes up by two and a half, 19% becomes 3%. How, Something how much do we get in state aid? I'm sorry? How much do we get in state aid? Uh, off the top of my head, I would say, I think it's around four or $5,000. Sarah, can you comment? That, that's what really? I remember. Just, go um, deep into the library. Sarah Collins? Yes, thank you. Happy to let you know. Um, this year we received over 7,500 in state aid and um, it's very helpful. It's absolutely necessary and we really appreciate it. And we receive that amount based on the fact that we are a robust library that loans quite a lot out to other libraries, even though we're small. And we get quite a lot of um, business, we get a lot of circulation, and all of those things help us qualify for state aid. And it means that we are also eligible for state grants of a higher proportion when those are needed. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just think we need to keep in mind that, you know, spending money to get money is kind of circular, yeah. you know? I mean, if you told me you had to hit a certain percentage and you're getting 100 grant from the state, obviously the math works, but I mean, 7,500 is... Good. Not zero, but within the context of a you know, five hundred thousand dollars. But you know what I mean? It's right. But the the materials line item also isn't out of whack, right? It's it's we're not overspending on materials just to try to capture seventy five hundred. I guess the point I'm trying to make is if, if you're trying to argue the three point six percent of the amount of spending in that line, it should be justified on other things than getting the grant from the state. In my mind. Well. Yeah. I'd also like to offer that our um, certification and eligibility, and this is just one of the many requirements, but there are only two that really come before the finance committee because there are only two that are really based in this financial picture of our budget. Um, these are based on mass general laws. And so the municipal appropriation requirement is one of the requirements. And the one that we're talking about now, the materials expenditure requirement, that is also based on Mass General Law, Chapter 78 and Section 19B. And it means that not only do we have this proportion of materials, not only are we eligible for state aid, but we're able to participate in interlibrary loan, which gives our patrons access to literally thousands of materials that our municipality does not have to buy because we're able to then reciprocate, we're able to share resources. It means that the infrastructure of the delivery systems are paid for, and we are able to participate fully as other communities in our state. Yeah, I, I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. <clears throat> I'm not qualified to comment on that. I don't use the library that much, but if that's the benefit, then that should be the reason, not the 
got a small grant. That's all I'm saying. Fair enough. It also you know, pertains to the accreditation of the library itself, which if you if you lose state accreditation, things like your standing in the schools and things like that can fall. Again, just yeah, come at yeah. it from the qualitative, not the quantitative. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, any questions for the board? No. I just had a question about attendance or participation in the library. Do you have a sense of how many people are using it this year? And I obviously COVID created a little bump, but any sense of that? No, we saw certainly saw a large increase in virtual attendance over during COVID. Right. Um, uh, we see about 5,000 people come through the turnstile every month. Mm -hmm. um, and we see about the same amount of participation online. Mm -hmm. Has that been pretty steady or yeah, yeah. pre COVID, COVID, yeah. now post? Yeah, it, post -COVID. Sarah probably has the, the history on, on the top of her head, but yeah, it's um, it's only it only you know it grows slightly. Um, mm -hmm. and the 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 usage, right? The number of people, mm -hmm. I, I think, on average, you know, of the 5,000 people, everyone it comes in once a month to taking out something, right? So it's not that they're just coming in and using the services in the library, they are actually actively using the materials. Yes, and we've definitely seen that resurgence since COVID so that the increase has been gradual over months, but we are now back to pre-COVID numbers in terms of the, um, the number of people that are physically in the building and also all of those online resources and use of those have just increased to higher numbers than ever before because many people became more comfortable using things and many people shifted to using our online resources, which they can do any time of day. And that's kind of wonderful. Any more questions? Uh, I just or do you stick your head out massively and massively quiet? We can't. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, this isn't a question. This is just more comment statement. But just, you know, I remember a few years ago, I had the duty to look at the library department. I was just kind of shocked, I guess, at the size of the budget. And, you know, we obviously every week, our budget season, are making tough decisions and opinions about all aspects of the town budget, right? Police, fire, even in. You know, it's just to me, one thing to keep in mind is the library is the fifth the biggest, right? So you got schools, police, fire, DPW, and then library. And that's, I don't know, it's just, I wonder if it's like that. In terms of the percentage of the the funding, it is not the fifth, it is not large. In terms of the percentage, if you look at what percentage of the tax dollars are spent on the library um, budget, it is not a large portion. Um, certainly per use, it is very low. Are we talking about the same number? Yeah. It doesn't Just sound like it, but in point. terms of the percentage of what our budget represents to the entire municipal budget, we are not a high percentage. Yeah, but you're ranked fifth is my point. Do you, do you have information on what other similar towns spend on libraries? Um, I don't this year, although I've certainly looked it up other years. Um, and we, if you're ranking us with other communities of a similar um, socioeconomic profile, um, we're not spending a high amount. We're not on the higher end of that for sure. If you're I, looking I at who's nearby, we've looked at who's nearby in terms Essex. of Essex County then we're kind of comparable. Okay. Which triple S's? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's just, <laughs> you can get into population differences, you can get into socioeconomic, that's just, <clears throat> that's a big ratio difference in my opinion. So maybe something yes. on the agenda for next year is come back with us regarding comparables with um, various yeah. towns, yeah. that would be helpful for us. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yep. We could, certainly, we could certainly do that. I know that um, a few years ago that was requested, you know, prior to the meeting and, and I did provide that. I do yeah. want to say that I am retiring in the fall, so it will be a, um, a new director that you will um, 
you know, be enjoying this evening with. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. It will have been 35 years of really loving working in the library. Yeah. Do I have a motion to approve the budget in the amount of $537,530? Andy moves. Do I have a second? Second. Peter seconds. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Maury? Yes. Andy? Yes. Peter? Yes. Tom? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Um, the other item is the um, capital item. Yep. which is capital is on page 186. Um, I think that this came before us with the CPC budget. And I think that people might've had some questions on it. Um, do people have questions? On, this is the library flood proofing and generator. Yeah, I'd love to know a little more about the history. I'm a little bit un unclear. This has been a constant issue or maybe a recent or rising oceans. I I'd love to know a little bit more about the dynamic of this or the history of this, whatever that is. We can talk about that. Yeah, um, I would defer to Dave. <laughs> Rick, why don't you introduce, we've got the whole library uh, trustees and the Great. president of the friends here. Why don't you introduce all of us so that everybody will know the faces are sure hi rick rogers uh, 82 old essex road uh, library trustee and chair um dave lumsden um treasurer uh, uh, and everyone introduced themselves oh. yeah. <laughs> i'm sure i live on school street i'm the president of the friends of the library and online hi. Oops. Oops. Yeah. online we have Sarah, <laughs> uh, our director and e e eden davies She's uh, our latest trustee. She's on, been on board for about six months. Hi, nice to see you. Hi. So I prepared um, a PowerPoint presentation for all of you explaining and justifying, I hope, the extent for the, um, for the uh, generator and for the remediation in the basement. I think you all got it. I did a, a few slight updates uh, so if you have the two versions on your computer, I hope you got the, Sarah, did, did everybody print out the second version? I hope. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll go through it then. Let's, yeah. Let's just go through it quickly. Okay. I, think. I can make it very quick. We have a very long meeting tonight. I know you do. I have to fly out tomorrow, so I don't want to go too late. All right. <laughs> so on July 12th, uh, 2021, we have heavy rainstorm, we had three inches of water accumulate in the basement. And thank, to, thank goodness Nate DeRosier was the man on the spot. He, he deserves a little round of applause here for all the work he did in helping to get rid of that water. He brought some pumps in and uh, unfortunately had to bring in a couple of dump trucks too because we had we have thousands of books stored in the basement that were ruined in the water. And those were books stored by the Friends of the Library for the benefit of our annual book sale, which is on the stone wall, one of the premier events in the whole town. Those were ruined. And uh, if you looked at the PowerPoint, you saw uh, dump, the dump trucks uh, uh, filled up with those ruined books, unfortunately. This is not the first flood. We've had quite a few over the years. And one of my slides shows that it's not going away. I'm on the Conservation Commission as well. And I presented a slide here that shows what the projected impact of a 10 year storm, a big storm might be 25 years from now. And the repercussions of that is that over 207 buildings might be affected by that storm. The shoreline buildings, the short, the storms are expected to come way across the parking lot right behind this immediate building perhaps into the basement of this immediate building. So the point is, we're going to have continuing floods. And what can we do about it? Well, we can start with the basement in the, in the library. And keep in mind, in a case of floods with households, the library can serve as a day shelter as well. 
if it if it has electricity and it has power, it has heat or air conditioning. We have Wi Connect uh, Wi Fi connectivity, and it's a safe and supportive environment for our, for our parents and for our children and our grandchildren. Good place to collect in case of a crisis. So the two parts to our remediation uh, remediation uh, request. One is the basement flood prevention program will call for a French drain, and that is an interior drain system on the two segments of the basement. One is about a foot and a half higher than the other. The low one is where the furnaces are. They're separated by uh, like a ship door, uh, one with a, a footstep on it. It's a sealed door or an airtight door, a fireproof door. And so the two rooms require separate sump pumps. Mm -hmm. We only have a sump pump in the lower region right now. It's 20 years old and the collection around that sump pump is deteriorating. It's a narrow uh, pipe that looks terrible. Also, this building was built um, in 1887. The stonework in that building is absolutely magnificent. But in the basement, unfortunately, the grout holding those stones together has deteriorated in many cases. It's fallen out and it's crumbling. We need repointing of that grout in the basement to keep the water from seeping in. And I've showed pictures of what the grout looks like. Also, uh, with the two new sump pumps that we're going to go in, we're going to have, in addition, a commercial grade dehumidifier. We've got mold problems, we've got mildew problems, and eventually, on this 125-year-old building, we're going to have wood rot. When that happens, that's a serious problem for this magnificent architectural st structure. So we proposed a generator. The generator, exterior generator would go in the back. It would be uh, not visible. It would sit below the level of the stone wall, and it would be pushed in the back corner um, uh, towards uh, Regina Villa's house and, and uh, the bank direction. How is it protected from being affected by flooding, exterior flooding? Well, that's a good question. The water, because it will be sitting on top of the ground, not in the basement, it, if, if the water gets that high, all of downtown Manchester, all of Crosby's, all of Richdale's will be well underwater. All those buildings will be underwater and town hall will be underwater. So um, it probably won't be protected. But not, most of our houses won't be protected either at that point. That's pretty high up. Uh, so what we're asking for is total of $90,000 $30,000 should protect the basement. Uh, $50,000 would cover the generator. Total $90,000. And Jack Burke from the CPC uh, supports this, and his committee has approved $45,000. And we're looking for $45,000 from you all. And keep in mind, this is one of the premier architectural masterpieces in the North Shore. Same architect built this, built the Boston Public Library. So I hope we have your support. Thanks for listening. Dean? Um, so we, we approved the project. We, we like the, um, the idea of keeping the, 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 the library dry and, and, and dehumidified. Um, when I read that presentation, the one thing that struck me was has anyone determined whether this is from groundwater or surface runoff? Because there is nothing about upgrading the gutters or the, the top to keep the water draining away. Good question. Hey, Nate, can you hear us? Nate yep. is standing up. Go ahead, Nate. Nate and I worked together on this, but you're better qualified than I am to answer some of these questions. Steve yeah. In the basement watching the work. Come in. Yeah, most of it was upwelling through the, you know, just the various fissures that's in the existing stone slab basement you know it's just finding those little cracks coming through you know it came in uh very quickly and it dissipated you know just as quickly when we had it um you know with the with the help of the pumps but you know it was a, a flash flood event um i think another portion of you know why we're trying to kind of add this to the basement is that you know as we're going through the ada uh bathroom project you know we're finding that 
you know, we don't have a lot of space in that, you know, we're going to have to give up something, um, some functionality of the library. And uh, we're looking at doing another kind of next phase of that where we evaluate all of the space needs and try to determine, you know, what would make sense. Um, and I think if we can make the basement more suitable for storage, that could help us, you know, provide some of the needed space upstairs to accommodate um, the, the ADA bathroom. So it's just kind of a, an extra step that we can, we can take to provide that additional storage, um, you know, for, for future projects. Thank you, Nate. Mike, did you have a question? Yeah, just building on Peter's point. I mean, I, I, I take what you said, but like, and again, I'm not a general contractor or an engineer, but like adding some kind of base mm -hmm. for the generator mm -hmm. would seem like short money to give yourself another two what? feet or three, you know, whatever, like, I don't know. The price of the generator includes a concrete pad. It's, it's about yeah, perhaps three, four inches thick. I, I think that might be a good idea. The problem is if we raise it up too high, it's going to stick up over the stone wall. And I think we may all hear complaints about, you know, the ugly looking generator sitting up over the height of the stone wall. Right. So maybe three feet's wrong and four inches is wrong and somewhere in the middle is the right answer. Might be a good idea. Nate, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, so we're currently do the, doing the CZM project where we had the Woods Hole Group out to do uh, the survey on the entire downtown area um, as part of the, the coastal flooding. Uh, and so they're going to be producing a report in the next month that basically evaluates all the elevations um, for the downtown and will go into the, you know, 20 year storm events, storm surge and provide those elevations. So, you know, we should have that information in hand by the time, you know, if we go ahead with this generator that we can evaluate, you know, what's the appropriate elevation to place it at and adding a sort of stand, you know, I don't think is going to be cost prohibitive if it comes to that. Um, you know, I think as mentioned before, you know, the, the library elevation is quite a bit higher than most of the rest of town hall uh, area, certainly the parking lot, the wastewater plant and downtown. So I would tend to think, you know, it, it is, Elevation wise, pretty good right now, but you know, we'll have a very definitive answer um, in the next month. Uh, on some prevention pounder cure. Great. Yep. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to approve the capital item for the library in the amount of 45000 right, Greg? So moved. So move. Peter moves. Do I have a second? Second. Maury seconds. Take a roll call vote. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Sarah Proves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Very much. Thank you. Our book sale will thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> We're stirring all over town right now. <laughs> I'd love to see what that study comes out. You know, I don't know if that'll be kind of in a newspaper or something. But, you know, uh, elevations, you know, it strikes me as a pretty well, piece of information. Yeah. We're all of us here at the patient. Well, they probably have a part six at the suckers meeting. Yes, right. there'll be a report as well. Yeah. 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 Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. 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 The next item on the agenda is Parks and Rec Operating and Capital. Um, Parks and Rec is on starts on page 156. We have Cheryl Marshall here. Who else do we have from Parks and Rec? That's it, just me. I didn't just bring my whole committee. <laughs> I wish I did now. Friends of the park. Yeah. We're going to ourselves. Um, so are there, we've got, we've got Parks and Rec, then we have Singing Beach, Tux Point, and Celebrations, and then the Capitol. Um, do, do, do any, does anybody on the board have questions with respect to the Parks and Rec budget? Yes, Dean. Yes, page 156. Right? Yes, page 156. Uh, we're planning to uh, replace the Brook Street playground. And is there any contingency for that? You know, using that area 
over this one. That would be the, when we get to the capital budget. Okay, but it's not going to impact the operations on. Well, Cheryl? Would it? Or is there a plan? Um, it shouldn't impact the operations if it goes according to schedule. Um, on things on that. Um, but either way, we'll, we'll survive without it for a month if we have to. That's what you mean, right? If it's offline. As long as it takes, it, yeah. I, mean, I thought it would take a little longer. Is that going to impact your rental income? Minimal. Any other questions? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the Parks and Rec budget in the amount of 164,904? Tom moves a second. Second. Andy seconds. Any discussion? A roll call vote. Roll call vote. <laughs> oh boy. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yep. Mike. Yes. Sarah says yes. Okay. <laughs> Next is Singing Beach and Lifeguards, um, page 156. 59. Sorry, 159. This is all about lifeguards, I think. A lot about lifeguards. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about this one. Tell us about it. What's going on with the lifeguards? So it, it is a lot about lifeguards, but not completely. Um, for some reason, the past couple of years, lifeguards have been harder and harder to get. And therefore, supply and demand, the rates have gone way up. Somehow, we managed to get around it last year and keep it in budget. Um, you know, around this time of year, we're already advertising for jobs. So we had the um, salaries out already, we had plenty of applicants. So. We didn't look for any major salary increases because we had plenty of applicants, so we were fine. By midsummer, lifeguards here talk to lifeguards other places and kind of, <laughs> yeah, they watch the news and they start comparing, and then all of a sudden we're underpaid, you know. Um, and compared to other lifeguards, they were underpaid. Um, so we tried to know all these other, other good parts of the job, your local, your, you know. Um, that was then after a little while, it did. It hurt morale at the beach a little bit, but I do think that it's time to kind of reset that and and catch up. We won't be doing the $25 an hour. I've heard that some of the MDC um, beaches have done um, because we do have other benefits. Like one of <laughs> um, But I do think yeah. that it's it's fine for to get good quality lifeguards. We've actually lowered the age over the past few years. Um, and I really don't want to have to lower it anymore. I was 18 and above, now we're 17. You can actually be a uh, certified lifeguard at 15 or 16, but at a pool or at a club or something, that's one thing. The beach is completely different. And we really try to stick to 18 and hire 17. So where, where are we starting salary? So um, last year we were at 16, this year I've advertised 18 um, for returning guards. I'd like to get that up at least in another couple of bucks because I want to encourage. Um, we try to have about a half and half turnover with staff. So it's not brand new every year. Half and half meaning half are new and half are Exactly, so. right. So in all of it, the beach staff as well. How do you determine your staffing on the beach. I often go to the beach and it doesn't seem to me like there's many lifeguards there. And I'm just curious as to how you determine your staffing. Yeah, it's funny because there are times that I'm like, where is everybody? But <laughs> the lifeguard world is different. Um, so during the week, we have four guards on. Okay. Um, and a few years ago, I actually went through the life, the entire lifeguard training and got certified because I need, I was like, I need to understand this better. They're telling me they need their breaks. And you know, I'd ask other park and rec people and they're like, yeah, it's true. Some of it's to get out of the sun. Some of it's because you're paying attention, scanning, scanning, scanning the whole time. So some of it's to get out of the sun. Some of it's just to kind of get your wits back. Um, so we have four on during the week and then eight on on the weekends. But at any time, there can be two or three on break during the weekends. and one or two. So sometimes when they have to just get off the stand, get their wits back, they can be off stand but still on duty. 
and then one that's completely off on break, and that's a rotation all day long, every hour. And they're all down at singing. They're all down at singing. Yeah. yeah. So you like to try to all the finance committee match revenues and expenses, right? <laughs> and I know that they're separate from your world, but right, right, right. You know, I just think to myself on a summer day that it's a downpour the whole day that right there's not going to be a lot of beachgoers but from the cost side is that irrelevant like in other it words, is irrelevant is irrelevant? Um, you're still booked on it yeah. we've tried a few different ways um but honestly they promise us 40 hours a week so we have to kind of promise them 40 hours a week regardless of weather so on the rainy days we stay open in the bathhouse and if there's even one person on the beach we try to keep at least one lifeguard out there but they'll usually work a half a day and get a half a day off with yep. pay. But the cost is the cost. Right, the, right. Whether the weather depends the revenues. So. Right. So what I actually was telling them last year, because they, you know, when they there started to be a little bit of uprising, they're like, oh, the prices just went up. Why didn't we get raises? And like, that's not how it works. The prices go up one year and then we see that money the next year. So hopefully we can get the money last year, which we did, and then spend it the following year. So not an exact science, as you all know, but. Well, I, I, I understand the increase in the lifeguard salaries. I don't in, in understand the increase in the quote unquote singing beach salaries. Thank you. Good question. That's why I said not just lifeguards. Okay. Um, so, as for the beach staff, traditionally I've been here, this is my ninth year, going into my 10th year. And um, when I first got here, we paid always a little bit more than minimum wage to try to get really cream of the crop. You know, not the kids who are just looking for a job, but really want a job that they enjoy. Um, but then as minimum wage went up every year, we were struggling just to make minimum wage really. So now we're the same. Now I look, obviously places are paying well above minimum wage. We have, I have staff sending me emails saying, I was just offered a job nannying for $22 an hour. I don't know if I'm going to come back uh, and I think we can't compete with that. I understand. But then, you know, Target and McDonald's and the donuts are all have, have starting salaries at like $16.50. I'm like, I need to at least, at least compete with that. You know, be nice to be able to beat it, but at least compete with it. Because I don't want kids to say, I'm not going to work at the beach because I need money and you don't pay enough. I want them to work at the beach because they want to be at the beach and because they need money. What, what's your rules criteria there? In other words, you said with lifeguards, you like them to be 18, you make an old tweak to 17 as long as they're obviously fully, right. credited, you know, but what about these jobs? So then each job, we, it was always at least 17 and we've lowered that to now we take some 16 year olds um, because we haven't been able to find enough 17s. But, you know, as the age gets younger, the management gets harder and the 16 year olds don't usually need money as much as the 17, 18 year olds. You know, originally it was, you know, get kids either going into college or already in college for the beach. They're dealing with a lot of money. They're dealing with a lot of people. It's, it's not an easy job. But then as the age gets lower, now we are dealing with high school kids. And as much as some of them like money, they don't need it as much. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're going to away by the way. You know, we ask them to give us up their vacation schedules ahead of time, but you know, then all of a sudden it's, I'm going away or my, you know, my family's doing this mm -hmm. and the kids, you know, got to deal with it. Um, but I would like to get that age up, which also helps with responsibility and showing up. Yeah, I just, I know several restaurant owners around here and, you know, not by choice, they're going the other way, right? I mean, they are hiring 15 year olds. Right. Just because and that's, there are some that's, great that's the labor years. market and, you know, so I'm just. Yeah. And that, that's what I we're talking like, about. Uh, yeah potential life and death and, you know, but these jobs are not. Right, right. right. They're dealing with a lot of money and a lot of public. And to be honest with you, for my supervisory staff down there, that job has gotten more and more difficult. Um, and honestly, like just dealing with the public and I'll say even dealing with residents has become increasingly more difficult. We can't get a police officer down there half the weekends. We, we used to have one every weekend. But last summer, they could never guarantee us one. They can't guarantee us one this year just because of their staffing issues. So then, you know, my staff is left there to handle a lot of the situations. They used, they used to be a, a policeman there. And even just the policeman presence mm -hmm. sometimes squelches issues. But now those are all coming up to my young staff, you know, the young adults. And 
Are you, did you have more issues last year with the parking lot filling up after they changed the, the sticker situation? You know what, we were shocked and we did watch that all summer and we did not. Okay. Ironically, that's the point filled up a lot more. Interesting. So <laughs> I, I felt like people thought the singing parking lot was gonna be a mess. So maybe they avoided it and went to Tux Point, but the Tux Point parking lot filled up more last year than it ever, ever has before, which again, brings up a whole lot of the set of issues that you can't have a 15-year-old kid down there when people go, well, you know me, you know I live here, I forgot my sticker, you know, like, so now we need adults there to handle that. Again, increasing yeah. So I got, I'll ask this question of Greg, just super high level, what's the, what's the range, a good year and a bad year? In terms of income? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. It's, it's 300. Um, 300 is a good year, right? Yes. Yeah. 300 is a great year. And then, like, 200 is more average. I would say, yeah. So you would say anywhere from three, but 200 is probably average. Yeah. And we're just, well, I will say we're, we're getting back to pre pandemic numbers, like everybody's saying. Um, but we also raised our prices. So when I say numbers, our numbers are money numbers, not people numbers. So the numbers rival. 19, you know, but and it means just as good. That really does mean there's fewer people, but you know, it's the same, but they're charging more. And there's not the same number of people. So I think it will still increase too. So I'm more concerned with dollars than yeah, people. I, I, um, well, I mean, so there'll be more people next summer probably, and therefore more money because the train situation was still kind of an issue last year. So assuming good weather. Somewhere in the 200 to 300 range, better weather, closer to 300. Something like that. She's not sure about the 300 number. Should I like that number? I'm going with one around two. I think you're adding the probably tax point numbers with the speech numbers. Oh, right, 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 right. I actually, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The money that comes in through the clerk's office. Sorry. I'm going to say a number that doesn't Right. So she's not including all the tags, I'll say the clerk's office. But if you include that, which is beach. Right. On top of yeah. cash through the beach. You're right. Sorry. Right. Yes. Okay. Where is it, Pia, where you told them to look? <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture. 30,000 feet. Okay. I'm just curious about the numbers of staff. Roughly, how many lifeguards? Are you working with and then obviously beach staff? What's that rough number? So we usually hire 10 lifeguards and then 12 um, beach mm -hmm. staff. I'm surprised the beach staff is so high. Well, it is eight on a busy weekend day plus the management assistant manager. Okay. So, and the trick is it used to be everybody worked every weekend and then people, I don't know, got younger and got on vacation. So now we couldn't have exactly the number we need. So we had to add a couple more on. So then it's not really everybody working 40 hours. Do the extra person. You know, so we have to put a little bit more. Well, there's two people in the parking lot. And one would oversee the bathhouse. Uh, for the, this is the beach, singing beach salaries. So, so what else? Um, so with the money collection, the, okay, the park, you know, oh, two at the beach and two at the parking park. lot for collecting money. Yes. There's, there's there's four. Four. On yeah. weekends, it's even more like two out on the street selling tags, two doing the parking lot, two at the ramp, and two doing bathrooms pretty much. And then the manager moving their rounds, collecting up laundry and breaks and everything else. Have you had any, any issues with your cash collections, audit wise? No, no. I mean, obviously, the auditors don't love it, but they, along with us, have you know, been out of their way. We, we, it's a work in progress all the time. You haven't considered going to credit cards. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, that would be the way. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we looked. And a lot of different things last year um, ended up saying like, all right, we're going to get this Verizon card line because that was the only way or the most um, consistent way, but it's not consistent. I mean, the Wi-Fi up there, it, it, it's horrible. The, yeah, the manager can't even work on a schedule because it's so intermittent. So even at the Snack Shack, they'll be like, 
half the time they don't even know if it went through. You can yeah. tell the people to go ahead and cross their fingers and hope the credit card it went through. Um, so we have not come up with that. We'll have the end of this. You mentioned the police officer and having a police officer, not you know. Yep. Sometimes it's hard, easy. I mean, we are. It should become a little easier, right? Like, yeah. I mean, hopefully, I'm not connecting dots that aren't there. But it, it was always easy. filled by a reserve officer, right? We're at we're adding two new officers. Yeah. So I'm no. thinking high level, yeah. not a silver bullet magic wand, but it should be easier. I have actually talked to the chief and. And he said, yes, there is going to be more staff, but that staff also has to help on the boat, also has to help with mm -hmm. parking, also right. has, you know, it's not it's like the SRO, right? Well, no, it's a it's 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 the SRO officers, it's not the SRO. It's the SRO hours, not the SRO. It's an FTE equivalent, not a person equivalent. Yeah. I well, think it's right. a new but reserve it's, officer, it's, right? It's kind of yeah. I'm thinking of FTE bodies. Okay. You got the SRO FTE that goes on the boat, and then there's yeah. two other FTEs over here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Right? No, three other. Yeah. Three, three people shifts, he's talking. Oh, three people shifts. And the SRO hours are for the harbor, so that's not part of the three person right. that's shifts. That's not part of the three shifts, yeah. Right? right. No. Right. But, so, again, part of the third person is sleeping. Right, uh, right. Whatever. I don't know. There's more police officers, so it should be easier to get one down the beach. How about that? <laughs> What's that? Two and two L. It's like a lifeguard. Set them on a rotation. We'll have the whiteboard, the pictures. Um, any more that. questions on the Parks and Rec budget? One just yeah. about the concession stand down there. And is that, that's like a three year contract? It and is. what's the revenue? coming in on that and are we benchmarked appropriately for that do we think or good question because today it's closed for the next three years without the canteen no interest in it <laughs> no. No. no we do have a bit um so the uh canteen rental has been fifteen thousand dollars a summer a year mm -hmm. um there's been a couple of years that we've during COVID that we didn't charge the full amount, um, you know, when it's resident only, and then when there were no grain at all. Um, this past year, she did pay the 15,000. Um, I have a proposal for this coming summer and the next two that we'll have to talk about. <laughs> yeah. later date, I guess. Wasn't it a public bid opening? It is, it is. Okay, so Captain Dusty's bid on it. <laughs> um, and they would like to set up a $10,000 um, rental with um, a percentage after certain income for them. Mm -hmm. So, they're the only one that bid, so. Oh, really? Yes, we'll take it. So Bravo didn't want to do it again? No. Um, they have too many other things going on. Yeah. Um, well, we're hard service to do. No. Um, do I have a motion to approve the Parks and Rec budget in the amount of $214,742? You do. Peter, Peter moves it. Second. Second. Maury seconds. Vote. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Sarah says yes. Thank you. Thank you. On the right side. <laughs> the next is um, Tux Point and Crowd Chapel, page 162. So, this these salary issues are the same reasons as you discussed for the beach. Exactly. Any questions? What's the heating oil for? Uh, the chapel. Oh, the chapel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the well, this is the Tux Point. Act the recreation of Parks and Rec salaries like for playground. I mean, that would only went up two and a half percent. Right. So you're not having a similar problem with charging people? Um, not really. At playground, we do try to um, hire high school kids. Right. So the for the management staff, they will get they will get raises to keep up. Right. But um, 
from the revolving fund. The high school kids will probably get a little more though. Right. Yeah. And how does the revenue work on this situation? From the for all the yeah, exactly. Depends at the charter house and Temples. do we regular yeah. kind of a number is that? Or is that in the number you just gave us before? No, no, no that's right now. Never. Um, I want to say it's in the 30, 40 range in tux. Um, remembering correctly? Like salary. Uh, probably. Salary for sure. Minimal. Minimal. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Particularly that I was wondering. You, you know offhand, what do we charge for, you know, the back of tux? Uh, uh, on that. Yeah, um, it's been up on it for, is it 500? I want to say it's 500 for residents. No, so 50. But not mentally for residents. I think three went from maybe 225 to 250 or 250 to 275. Yes, I do do this every day and it's still <laughs> I don't know those exact numbers. Um, and then the, the residents are like more than double that. But um, so that's weekly compared to weekends. Oh, that's what I'm getting. That's yeah, so it's weekends, weekdays, resident, non resident. Yeah. So I low about 30 grand, low like 4 point 35. So. so, is the average rental sort of what would that be? Roughly? Is it sort of a four hour block? A, generally? Um, yeah, so it either goes from 9 um, to 2 30, so 9 a.m. to 2 30, yeah. and 3 30 to 9 p.m. Is so you figure you've got roughly 13 weeks in a summer. And so it's 13 weekends, 26, 54 weekend blocks to four. I'm just kind of wondering on our revenue front, if that's, if we're in the, if we're banded where others are, and it's a gorgeous location. Right. You know, are we taking full advantage of it? At least for non-residents. Do, do you? Yeah, we definitely act up the non-resident. We don't get a ton of non-residents. So I was wondering. Yeah, okay. we, oh, we, we put it out to residents um, three months before we put it out to non-residents, so that residents get a chance from October to the end of the year to book for the following year, and then kind of whatever's left opens up to the non-residents in January. Um, so most, the booking pretty take... solid. The booking's pretty solid. Weekends a sorry. lot. Um, sorry. sorry. Weekends more. Yeah. Um, the weekday ones, it's good to have them available because a lot of non resident businesses will use it, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is great because you know, $800, $900 is nothing to them, but to an individual it is. Um, so, and that, those usually trickle in kind of in the spring, in summer as it's happening, you know, because there's availability during the week. There are still some times available if anyone's in time. What's up, the non resident? Okay. Any other questions on this topic? Do I have a motion to approve the Tux Point and Carl Chapel budget in the amount of $30,740? So moved. Andy moves a second. Second. Peter seconds. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Steve. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Sarah votes yes. Okay. Now the next one is celebrations. And I think one question we had on this when we originally looked at the budget is at one point we had a thousand dollars in there for Freedom Fall Hours <clears throat> Memorial. We didn't see it in this budget. And funny, really, they put it under me, I think, because we didn't know where else to put it. But I think there was a high school student who um, did a project putting flowers on the graves. And I'm guessing that high school student has graduated and moved on. Does that sound right? You remember that? Yes, but there's been some interest in re, ah. re uh, establishing it. Mm -hmm. But it's not in the budget, right? It's not shown here. Does it show somewhere else? I think Greg's email is showing that. <laughs> Should it be? I mean, is it are we kind of trying to get out of is something that we need to address or, or is it um, not necessary? Let me follow up on that and confirm that for next year. So we'll hold so, on this budget? Or, or put it in if you want. But 
Uh, if you want me to confirm, I should just follow up with the person. Okay. We'll hold. We like to hold things. Wait, would you like to then do it in there? <laughs> oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight now. The, the other question that always comes up is, is um, the amount of overtime for public safety wow. that occurs on July 4th. But that's not in this budget. It's not. So the question is should it be? Should it be? Oh. Oh, okay. it's, it's, it's a significant onus. Yeah, yeah. It's probably 10,000 plus dollars. Yeah, what I mean. um, hmm. So it's. it's Ouch. So does police usually cover that in their budget? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they spend so much this, much this year. As you scrutinize their overtime budget, they're going to push back and say, well, this really isn't mine. <laughs> so that's, that's sort of a give and take here. Well, and you have the same issue on Memorial Day. Over time. Are there other departments that um, mirror the same situation, or is it really only celebrations with the police? Because I'm sort of thinking we have a pretty siloed budget for you know overtime, workman's comp, all that type of thing, and now we're splitting it across departments. And I'm just curious if there are other things that pull on the police time that should be thought about like that? Um, I think nothing's coming to mind beyond these, these events. I mean, yeah, I love like, I don't care because it's left pocket, right pocket kind of thing. And <clears throat> I take your point, like maybe it is slightly more appropriate to have it here, but I could argue it's just as easy to keep where it is. And then if someone asks a question about it, you just say, right. here's right. why. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's okay. You know, both chiefs would be okay to me aware of it. They, they wouldn't mind a little bump and that overtime. Oh, I see. Recognize, recognizing that it's being it's being uh, dedicated to this purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know as much about the bump. It's just more that when someone asks the question about the bump, there is a direct black and white answer to it. That's well. the other thing. Shouldn't every other year be a little different because we have fireworks every yes. other year. Yes. It's, it's the same though, the 4th of July, 10,000 every year. Oh, well, that be. amount has always been the same. We right. haven't that amount. The, the overtime certainly varies. Yes. Uh, that's Fireworks year versus a non-fireworks year is a big difference. This year it was crazy. It was out there the whole day, but there was such a big drought, you really couldn't argue with that. You know, oh, what were we doing with fireworks in such a drought anyway? Yeah. <laughs> Do you get private donations in sufficiently to cover the fireworks or not? We have so far. Okay. Okay. Not, you know, not far and above, but so far we have been okay. And what does that fundraising tend to raise? What does that kind of So um, fireworks are usually $30,000 and the parade is approximately $30,000 as well. So even though the uh, amount that we spend fluctuates year to year, the the 10,000 that we get from the town or through donations, it kind of just helps us to level out the fundraising. So we're gonna hold this one, Sarah. Yeah, until we find a find right. about Freedom Flowers Memorial. Got it. What's next? 186 capital budget for parks and rec. Yeah, so. The only things on here are the town share, of Brook Street turf replacement, 186. Brook Street turf replacement and the Chowder House restroom roofs. And the Chowder House restroom roofs to 70,000, we approved 35 to CPC, so they're looking for a $35,000 match. The Brook Street is 300,000 from taxes and 100,000 from revolving. What's that mean? Everybody's revolving. So the parking revolving. Parking revolving. revolving. Okay. 
What, what's the 70,000? Is that based on, what's that based on, the 70,000? The charter house roof and restrooms. I mean, those aren't big buildings. That's a lot of money. We can have an estimate. Nate estimated it out. That's why he's going to stay on in case there are any questions. He's still there. Okay. Nate. Yep, I'm here. Can you explain the charter, the costs of the charter house and restroom and roofs? Yeah, so we had a contractor come in and give a quote and, you know, based on prevailing wage, uh, that was, uh, you know, where they thought it would come in uh, for a bid project. Is that um, just yeah. roofing, Nate, or what is Yeah, it? yeah, re-roofing, you know, flashing, kind of the, everything that goes along with the re-roofing. Um, for those for the building uh bathroom and then the the kitchen area as well okay it, it seems like a lot of money for just re -roofing. It, it, it did surprise me a little bit where it came in at um yeah uh, but you know that's he's same contractor that's done the seaside one roof uh done roofing repairs at uh the firehouse um you know and so they previous estimates that he given were pretty pretty right on with where things came in Yeah. <laughs> wow. I have a metal roof. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. Um, Thank you, Nate. Any more questions on the capital budget? Yeah, I, guess, I think I got to re ask the question. Revolving. Yeah, what? So it's basically this. School. Basically, it's, it's monies that are paid for programs that parking rack run. And there are. Um, some leftover dollars in that. So a little additional money is collected and it has to get paid out. So over the years that has accumulated. Okay. So I'll I'll it's call like it, a reserve. I'll call it the Fargo Next bank account. Okay. <laughs> Look free cash, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't have to be spent on program related items. I say so it can be on capital that, items and so forth. Right. So we use that field to run many programs, including the after school program and the playground program. So the Brook Street field makes sense that some of the money goes to that. Sorry, it's just in my <laughs> private world, revolving fund means you probably know it's the yeah. credit facility you draw down to borrow against. This is not that. This is excess cash. This is like net income. This is, this is. Well, the revolving fund has some net income. Yeah, and it accumulates. Yeah. And it's basically the 300 from the town and 100,000 from the school, right? No, no. 400 no. from the school. No, oh, 400, 400 from the town. Yeah. yeah. And, and, 400. and 400 from the school. So it's 800 for just Brook Street. Yes. Oh, just, I'm sorry. For yeah. just the top. Yeah. I was going for the both of them together. Yeah. Okay. It's existing cash in hand, not borrowers. Okay, so and I'm sure you all know we couldn't use CPA money for artificial turf, so it wasn't right. even an option. Uh, so we are. Am I correct that what we're approving is four hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars? The four hundred for the Brook Street, and then the town's thirty-five thousand portion of the Chatter House. That's true because the 35 is from the city. Okay. City. Yes. Okay. It's a little it's very confusing. Yeah, the way it's shown here is a little confusing. I, I can see that now. Um, so, do I have a motion to approve the parks and rec capital budget in the amount of 435000 So moved. Tom moved. Second? Also. Maury seconds. Vote. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Sarah votes yes. Mm -hmm. can, can I ask uh, just a question about the Brooks, Brooks Street field? Because that's that's like a shared responsibility with the school right. and, and the town. Okay. And um, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it gets a lot of maintenance attention. We're working on that with the school. Are you? Yeah, that okay. is um, part of redoing it too, is the whole maintenance plan, um, which they've already started to try to do. But yeah. So far, it's just been to really try to piece it together to keep using it. Yeah. Um, but moving forward, a maintenance plan is is part of the deal. And who um, pays for that? So so far, the school has paid for it. Okay. Uh, we may be discussing a change in that, yeah. um, and raise possibly raising the fees, the user fees mm -hmm. at Brook Street to to cover that.
I think we're done with you, Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> We have lots of interesting things coming up. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Manchester Essex Regional School District. It looks like a little site over here, sorry. Um, and I can't remember whether I shared this with people or not. We received the final numbers. Did I send that around? No. Not that I'm aware of. Um, so the total budget was the same that we discussed when they were in to visit us. Mm -hmm. The only thing that changed is they added ugh, ten thousand for the late bus. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand for the late. Yeah. Anna, do you have that information? Yeah, it's 20,000 20, for the late bus. Um, and then the, I can get an exact number, but there's the other one is adding in the um, the sixth grade Spanish. Yeah. Um, and then also the third one is 50,000 small cap. Okay. 50,000 what? Small cap. For well, facility. Capital. Maintenance. Capital. Sorry. <laughs> small cap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly where you want to So... The total assessment to Manchester is $16,819,549 for the operating budget, which is a 5.72% increase. How does that compare with the like original number you had in? We had 2.5% of the original budget. It was a holding at just a two and a half percent increase. Okay. So the dollars. It's five hundred. Yeah. Five hundred and, and twelve thousand more. Okay. So this is instead of relying on the reserve funds that they have been using for operating. Why that additional fund? Sorry, say that again. So in the past three years, yep. they have been relying on reserve funds yep. to pay for operating. Right. So this just, this year stops that practice. In, in order to stop that practice, a higher amount is needed. In, in the because they're going back and covering the prior reserve amount. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. spending at those prior reserves now being yeah. replaced. That's it. Never correct. Here's the question I'm asking you. And the answer might be, we don't know yet. This is still too many moving pieces. The question is now plugging in that additional 500 into the, the whole thing. Right. Does it right. still That's work? The number yes. Yeah. So we, we have, okay. um, yes, we're able to, to um, on this total budget, including the school appropriation um, with our existing levy capacity. And we still have leftover capacity. In part because we've done some things actually in the past few weeks. I mean, I know it's so, 20 grand here and 20 grand yes. here, but that obviously has helped. Well, increasing your estimated revenues by 300. about 250,000, that should be um, So are we talking an increase of 2.5% or are we using part of the excess levy capacity? I'm going above two. Okay, Access to what? Data. I don't see that here. I might be missing it, but that's a so number. It's, it's roughly another you know, point and a half. So instead of two and a half, it's more like four. Okay. Well, it's, yeah. yes. It's a little confusing. Well, we <laughs> had asked for a new evaluation. summary, and I don't see the summary here. Um, you know, we'd ask for this front some this balanced budget mm -hmm. summary page. Twenty one. So we could we could put that up on the screen. Okay. Um, and Andrea, could you put up that budget summary page um, from the? Yep, I can do that. Detailed spreadsheet. Kind of tell me I have to make yeah, you need to make around. Yeah, you need to make around. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Okay, you should be all set. So what she's about to show you does, does, shows an unbalanced. So it shows a four hundred and eleven thousand um, dollar deficit. So that's what we have to. <clears throat> so right now, uh, it assumes a, a two and a half percent tax increase, but we're showing a four hundred eleven thousand dollars shortfall. Okay. I'll call that one percent, right? On forty million, right? No, because we're doing the town budget, which is only twenty million. Well, I'm, I'm doing it on the um, how much each percent in tax increase raises. So each per, each percentage point, yeah, increase of the tax in the tax rate what? raises about two hundred eighty thousand. Okay, because the assessments are two point a two billion eight hundred. Well, I just the total revenue. If I look up the top of that, it's about forty mil, right? But it's based right, on it doesn't all come from taxes. The taxes are based on the assessed value. So the assessed value is like 2.9 million billion. All right. So I'll look more at the 31, 31, 31, 513. Right? No, it's not. It's based on the assessment, not no, I understand. We're saying six and a half dozen, which is we're coming at it from different ways. 31. Um yeah, 31 million. Yeah. Okay. And if you go to the next page, the revenue page. So here you, here you can see in the, you know, looking at the blue column, the blue yeah. highlighted up top. Um, so you see um, the base of the 27. 927 without an increase. And then you see a two and a half percent increase bringing in roughly 700,000. Okay. Um, so new growth, we're bringing in that 200,000 number for uh, new taxation on new real estate, basically. Um, and then the next number is, is our excess levy capacity, so 838. So we need to take roughly half of that, 411, to balance the budget. So to, to raise another 411, around, I should do the math. So, and, that's, and that's incorporating all the edits we've done to date, right? Like on the local receipts and so that the snow and and four and a quarter. all that other stuff. Yes, and it also includes... Um, the new staffing in both police and five. And I know that hasn't been resolved yet, but that's that's in this number right now. Which fire? Yeah, which fire? The collective of them. So it's included the two, two firefighters. Two firefighters. Well, it's a higher number. So yeah. that's in the four eleven. That's in the four eleven. So we, we wanted to show you sort of the I guess I'll call it the worst case. Oh, that's what you're showing the worst case scenario. Yeah. Yeah. So it raises taxes about four and a quarter percent. And it, so yes. that in terms of town meeting and you know voting the budget for the town's people, <clears throat> four versus you know the two and a half because it's unused levy capacity, it's not presented as an override. Right. It's mm -hmm. just a mm -hmm. majority vote. It doesn't go to the ballot. It doesn't go to the ballot. Yeah. yeah. And this does not include the debt exclusion if the school does that for the turf fields? It does not. And it looks like that that won't hit the books until 25. Okay. So they'll, um, well, and then more around the call today, I was not, I was with union negotiations. But um, my understanding is that assuming that they bond it in, in the summer, then you typically have a year until you start your payments. Okay. So we don't actually have to deal with that number, but you should be aware that it's out there. We, we do need the authorization. Yes. So there will be a vote and a, and a, a ballot Correct. to authorize that bond. Yes. And the school committee, bless their hearts, found that they could have a meeting between now and March 7th. That would help. Um, and and then we will have 
they the school committee will have voted on what they're going to do. Right. And you can add that to the warrant on and the sixth. It will it they will it will be added on the third, I think. They're they're meeting on the first. So so we will know exactly what they want to do rather than putting something on and hoping it's right. So much better to have it in print going yeah. out to everybody. Yeah. This is not good on town meeting for the yeah. discovering numbers. So I understand that the concept of, of the schools deciding, you know, not to use their kind of uh, their fund. Yeah, um, revenues, their reserve. Their reserve to to fund operating. Um, and I guess the presumption is that they now have they're looking toward you know more need for capital expenditures that they would use that uh, reserve for. Uh, uh, well, two things. They're they're, uh, they're very worried about a, a surprise um, at, at Essex Elementary yeah. Uh, yeah. in terms of some some failure or major yeah. major breakdown. So there's that. Plus, they they really want to have. A healthy reserve when they are potentially going out to bond for the new elementary school as a way to to um, uh, show the bond market that they have very stable finances and therefore get a better rate. Yeah, I, I'd really like to see some concrete numbers from them on that because you know I do a lot of work in that area and you know there's cost benefit to everything and obviously the benefit of having that extra cash. What they're saying is you get a better rate, a better rating. I would say maybe, but even if I can see yes, now I want to know, like, how big is that though? Like, is your rate 0.01% better because you had $4 million in the bank? I'd, I'd argue that's bad cost benefit, right? Like, so. Is it the towns that bond it? That's going to say it. It links through to the towns yeah. as well, which is. I mean, not, that the, not that the school, you know. <clears throat> um, the, only the school district can borrow for building a school. <laughs> Because of the way a region works, yeah. at least that was what the lawyer on the call said. So they borrow, we pay. Yeah, they borrow, we pay. <laughs> Certainly, our credit rating is a significant part. I think it's more than significant. I think it it is the I think it is the credit rating. Like as we pay. I mean, because like it's, it's we're the ones that collect the revenue. We're Except the ones that fund them. Except has a different credit rating. Right. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's the yeah. argument between a Rolls Royce and a Mercedes. I mean, we're AAA and they're double A. I mean, you know. and I think the road Andy was going down, but if you're not, I'll yeah. drive down that road is, you know, if, if they are, you know, arguing for a big reserve balance for them, then we don't need to be doubled up on it. Like, yeah, we had talked about that. Yeah. That wasn't so much where I was going, but just, just to, Explore the notion of what are they, you know, so what does their reserve budget need to be for their mm -hmm. needs and, mm -hmm. and how are they planning to use it? Mm -hmm. You know, because what's the what's the purpose of paying into a certain percentage of reserved if if they don't need it? They've been using it for operating, for example. And I and I get the, the you know, kind of the, the rainy day concept for, you know, if, they, if the boiler craps out over right. at Essex. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think, you know, so, and that's so the big the big, uh, big issues at Essex and uh, certainly the you know, EDHC system yep. and the and the, the roof is the other real big one. That's uh, that's a big ticket item. Yeah, yeah. So what what does their budget have for their projected targeted reserve, either in dollars or percentage terms? Either by ten percent. It is actually um, it's about two point three point two million dollars. Actually, close to eleven percent by the end of two thousand twenty three. So then, you know, you know where I'm going to go. Um, we just draw down some of our reserves to fund that 400. We don't need to be sitting on 10 to 12 percent if they're going to be sitting on 10 percent. Oh, so just like, you do like, yeah. Okay, how does Essex operate in that regard? In terms of their reserve fund, you know, whether they include the, you know, the district. Their reserve is broken up into many little silos. They, they, have, they have a lot of different approach. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it's a little they harder. Put money aside and, yeah. for future projects. Yeah. And and, uh, and then also then how is because this proposed budget affects Essex more. So have, 
what's the latest on mm. Essex and there? I don't think that matters whether we or not we approve it. I mean, I think because that we need to make a decision whether we approve it. We approve this. They don't approve it. Then ours backs down to something else. Then they have to start yes. over. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. okay. yeah, that's a whole new process. Right. Okay. So the key is the way we're planning to pay for this is to use some of our unused levy limit. <laughs> that, that's that, that's the key in this whole thing. Right. right. Yeah. Or well, to Mike's point. Yeah, I, I, have, I have a different opinion on that. Okay, and right. yours would be... So my you, opinion is if, if, if the school district is going to argue for this big 10, 11% cash reserve, and we say, okay, then we don't also need to be sitting on a huge cash reserve. Right, but, right, but that's separate. But... but but money is fungible. Right, but but you're using it for ongoing expense. This is not a one-time expense. Right. And I would not advocate doing reserve for. You know, we need to be um, careful when we talk about using you know operating funds for capital or capital profit because at the end of the day, cash comes in, it goes out. Like there's all kinds of spokes that go through the hub. Do you know what I mean? So like. Well, there's a fundamental difference in my mind. But at the end of the day, I guess what I'm saying is if we're agreeing that they're going to have a 10 or 11%, then we don't need to target the 10 or 11%. So, you know. I, I, I'll agree with that. But I wouldn't use that excess. So what amount okay. of the, hold on, what amount, so for the capital budget, we're spending $1.9 million in taxation. Right. You're, go, you're, you're going where I'm going. Cash is fungible. I mean, Which you could reduce that portion from, you, you could. from taxes and increase the amount we pull out of reserves. But as you, as you look ahead, you know, as we look at the five-year projections, we, we're relying on reserves to continue to fund capital. And if we, yeah, if you, if you draw down quicker, then, then it won't be there for the out years. You can slice in and dice in a bunch of different ways, but all I'm saying is, you know, I'll even concede this might be a one trick pony because, but, but so what? Fine. It is, you know what I mean? Because we're saying we're going to consciously target a lower percentage for our free cash reserves because, you know what I mean? So, yes. so we're doing a one time takedown. Now, what we do with that one time takedown, you could say, don't spend it on operating. And I could say, okay, fine, I'll take it and spend it on capital. But now the money that was going to go to capital, I put over here, like it's it's a lot of left pocket, right pocket. At the end of the day. Yes. It's cash is cash. I understand. It's fungible. Yeah. Okay. You know, what's so I'm, but I'm curious though, what's what's your recommendation? Well, I mean, again, you, you know that I'm concerned with yeah. using yeah. my fund balance because I it has worked to our advantage to, to grow our capital expenditures. Kind of a I, like, I, I like to have it in hand before I spend it, so that's. Mm -hmm. That's what we've done over the last 10 years. Now, has it gotten a little high? Sure. Yeah. But we've taken a big drawdown this year. We're spending 1.7 on it. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're going to be in that 10% range. Yeah. I've heard that as a broken record, though, for the past six years. We've always ended up higher. We, you know, yeah, well, we did We did go but, down. But you last are, year, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We, are, we have. We did go down on a should, forecasted basis, no, but no, we won't no. know. The short was down. I just did the, I don't have it with me, but I just did it to put it into the report. Okay. There hasn't been one number below 10% in the past that I know. I'm saying the actual dollar balance went down. And therefore, obviously, also the percentage, percentage. percentage. But I'm just saying, yeah. hasn't been below 10%. But, but we, we are getting closer and closer to the actual. But for example, we will, we will be lucky to have enough money in our health insurance account this year. To cover all the expenses. In the past, we've had hundred thousand left over in that account, mm -hmm. um, and so as we bring everything closer and closer, there's less there's less wiggle room, and, and we have hiccups. Hiccups happen. Well, sure, um, but our targeted reserve is not zero. Like right, it, 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 it's not even five. It's ten. I mean, I've looked at other towns, and they do with much less. 
And I'd argue our forecasting ability, like, you know, people pay taxes in our town. You know, other towns probably don't have that luxury. And they do have to have a much bigger percentage for bad debt provision than people not pay. We don't have to worry about that, which is nice. Can we get into this a little more next week um, when we have the full budget and then you go circle back around and look at yeah, this is, this is and the last yeah, it's just right. Absolutely. Okay. We just got there because of the school, which is obviously right. the biggest part of the budget. Right. That's, that's how we got there. So the other so the other wild card I need to bring up is negotiations. Negotiations. And is there they're down labor done? negotiations? Yeah. You're 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 negotiations. So, no, we're far from being done. Mm -hmm. We will not be done in time. Okay. Um, so we need to think how best to handle that. Do we wait until the fall town meeting and do a supplement? And, is it, is it, and pay retroactive. How many unions? Every union or two? Three out of the four. Oh, three. Which ones? So what? Which ones? Not police. <laughs> so, so fire, DPW, and Claire. I'm sure fire is looking for 20%. I mean, on a dollar basis, police and fire are running. <laughs> so DPW is big too, right? Clerical is small, I would assume. So I'm not going to worry about that. Police, you're saying, is fine. So it's really fire and DPW. Are the big, the big it's ones. A, a dollar. Yeah. 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 Some towns just put, set aside X dollars for mm -hmm. salaries. And, and don't out, you know, and then it gets allocated after negotiations are done. That's option A. Option B is is you would do a supplemental in the fall, and things would be retroactive to. So what's what's in the what's in the budget right now? You obviously yeah, made, you made an assumption. We we we, we built this budget on for that. I would suggest do a supplemental in the fall. I mean, yeah, I don't know, just. It hurts me to say, all right, we're going to pre fund yeah. something that hasn't been negotiated yet. And that's that, kind of, you know, that tips your hand. And then, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So, so we do it in the fall, and what, and the town votes it down. Yeah, I got to go back to the. Okay, okay, okay. I think we do it in the fall. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Still, yeah, we, yeah. The contract says subject to appropriation. Yeah, I, I think we do it in the fall and let the town vote on it yeah, right. yeah. explicitly. For, for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Yes, a lot of reasons. And it makes it very, very clear what people are getting and what they're paying for. Right. You know, it silos it out, which a lot of times it's all lost. Yeah. Like, I think this, right. this makes it really front and center. Transparency. Yeah. yeah. And so a supplemental appropriation, how does that impact the tax rate? It's too late to include it in the tax rate. No, you know, so we do it in November. Okay. We set the tax rate first, first of December. Okay. Okay. So we capture it. Yeah. So usually there's a small increase from Q1, Q2 to Q3 and 4. Does that mean yes. it's bigger increase? It could be bigger first. Yes. Andrew, have I misrepresented that at all? No, you got it. Okay. All right. I agree. <laughs> okay. Um, back to the school budget. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the school Manchester Essex Regional School operating budget in the amount of sixteen million eight hundred nineteen thousand five hundred forty nine dollars? So it's a big number. Maury makes a motion. <laughs> Do I have a second? Yeah, I can. Andy seconds it. Discussion. Wow. 5.7%. It's taken a long time to get here. Um, I think it's been worked over pretty hard. Yeah, I just, I, in particular, I wish I had some better concrete data from the district about why they need so much cash specifically to go to the bond market. And, you know, show me you're going to get that much better of a rating. Show me you're going to get that much better of an interest rate. And then maybe I'll understand it because. I know the bond market pretty well. I, I deal with it every day. And I, I'm not I'm not buying that part of it, but 
Will this question keep coming up? I mean, this isn't the last moment we're going to deal with your observation of the bond market. They're not going to okay. be doing a project. Yeah, yeah exactly. Here. So this this will probably be front and center next year too on the question of whether reserves are used. I mean, they'll you know, and versus taxation. Uh, right. I think I think what Aldi was here a couple of meetings ago. Whenever that was, he said that he would try to get better answers for you. It, it's like the same discussion I've had with you, right? You know, do we need enough cash in the bank where if, you know, a police car blows up, we need to buy one cash in hand? Sure. You know, so the, for them, that's the boiler or roof, right? Like, I get it. Okay. But, you know, three point something million dollars. I mean, I don't know. That's not a boiler. That's a lot of money. I mean, tell me on the roof. I don't. It, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's more than a roof, I think. I'm not, not sure that it is more than a roof, actually. That roof was the Habib number for the roof was, was huge. Yeah, it was three million bucks. Is that three certainly? million bucks? No, it wasn't that high. But two, yes. I think it was. I think it was around two. Mm -hmm. Shopping. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's a hell of a number. They must be replaced. Well, I would. You know, I have a bunch of the same concerns you have, Mike. But I think the school has a lot of cushions. I mean, they've got a lot of um, special education, yeah. transportation. They've got a lot of things that come at them. That you know, it's very, very different than running a commercial operation. Um, so. No, I, I understand. I reconciled it in my mind, but I, it's not an easy one. Again, we all have a furnace or a boiler, right? And like right. tomorrow morning, boom, it just goes and you got to fix it. You know, a roof, I don't know. I would think you have better visibility. Like, you know, if that doesn't go overnight kind of thing, right? I mean, yeah. like you, you'd know now. If it's, they've, they've got leaks. Well, they've got leaks and they know it's, they're on borrowed time. <laughs> Okay, but how about this? Are we going to spend two million dollars on a new roof for a building that we're going to well, build new? Like that's that, part that's of this Habib that's the issue, report. Isn't it? That's the issue. There. That's part of the Habib report as to point. what needs to be done. To so that's that's why they're trying to accelerate new, yeah. the timeline for replacing that building. And what they'll do instead is is patch and repair. Yes. So long story short, we're not going to spend two million dollars on a new roof. No. Right. Because that would be silly. Because yeah. we're going to build a new Essex Elementary School. Right. Yeah. Well, so well, to some degree, that depends on matching funds from MSBA, which might happen two years or ten years or three years. So that's kind of the legal. I, I get all the variables. I get all the. But I'm just right. Like you would, you would patch it yeah. much, right, more logically than yeah. spend two million on a new roof because you're going to build a new school. I get the variables. I get the state funding. Yeah. You know, that to me is more of a timing, right? Like, right. We're going to build a new SX elementary school. Or the question is, is it going to be? Have they decided they're building one? Are they still looking at maybe rehabbing? They haven't made that decision. They, they, no. they have to, with they the have, SBA, they have to, they have yeah. to study each option. Yeah. But they'll, they're going to knock it down. Yeah. Realistically, they're going to build a new one. The question is, what's the time frame range? You know, I don't know. What is the Three to six years? years? It, it all depends on if they get accepted. I read in the paper they were applying this year. Yes, they are. They will apply. Yeah. They'll apply this year. If they get accepted this year, we're in deep trouble. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and that's what happened with the Memorial School. They applied and were accepted. They told us it would be two or three years. They applied and they said, whoops, we got approved. Yeah. Year one. It's so. a surprise to us. Year one. Because Memorial was so recent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Memorial was in worse shape, but they Yeah, happen. okay. More issues. So I guess back to my central point. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not sitting right because because of that huge cash reserve. Like I don't, I'm not getting that. I'm not on board. I don't. Okay. <laughs> Should we take a vote? Well, I'm oh, sorry. Just there was discussion. Don't they they bust well, up the reserve for this year because they draw down on it. This is no. like a 10 year correction. No, that's the, the it's not bumping up the reserves. It's it's bumping up. It's the, not taking any more out of the reserves. Right. 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 Making up for the previous, isn't it? Also. So I mean, it, 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 no. If you want them to spend more of the reserves, you don't you put back on the on the field. You say spend spend the cash you have to do the, the turf fields. That would that would be that, my that's that's where this discussion would go in terms of the result. 
Because that, what would that do? That would take them from 11% down to ballpark. Well, so it's a million, a million two. 1.2 out of okay. 3.2. Two. So take it down by a third. Take it down by a third. So eleven down to seven and a half. Yeah. Roughly. Like <laughs> I me, mean, I don't see the problem with that. I think their feeling is that they will actually go forward with Highland Field. And depending on how boats and all that stuff work in different towns, Brook will either happen or not happen. But I think they're pretty definitive about. By hook or crook getting Highland done. I mean, it's a pretty critical asset for them, and I guess it's got some pretty serious problems. Right. But I'm just saying, to Greg's point, if we said, look, you know, do the field, but spend it out of reserves, because, right? right? So Reser reserves for capital is okay, right? <laughs> let, let's make that a separate topic of discussion when we have to consider the warrant article. For the fields. So, the, so, the, so it'll be a separate article yeah. for that exclusion for the fields. And you could say, we don't recommend that. We recommend. Okay. You think you're it. So this that's, is your operating. Yeah. And then when it comes to the other stuff, it that's that's capital. And then we can say, we suggest. Yes. That, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm fine with that. Okay, are we ready to vote on the $16,819,000? Maury? Yes. Andy? Yes. Peter? Yes. Tom? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Sarah votes yes. Please don't let me be asleep on that other thing. Um, <laughs> the, the next item for the school is um, the debt. Um, of $2,796,163, and, and that's a decrease of 7%. What page? Same page, 178. It's the line under the school. We got new numbers. It's different than what was in the printer. So, yeah, that's what I Sorry, Yeah. It's it's it, the original was two seven eight three five nine nine. Now it's two seven nine six one six three. Could you repeat that again, sir? Sorry. Two seven nine six one six three is Manchester's appropriation. You guys are ahead of me for a seven percent decrease. That's what is in this thing. I'm sorry, did you say 2796? 2796 163. So it's like down by uh, 7% from last year. And that's all in the schedules of the debt that right. we approved years ago. So that's debt rolling off on the high school and the water. Yes. This is one of the silliest, right? Because it's just right. It's a payment that needs to be made on a bond. Right. Like, there is no. So I have a motion to approve the $2,796,163 oh, for okay. the school debt. Mike makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Maury seconds. Vote. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Sarah votes yes. Mm -hmm. um, the other school item is. Can I just ask a question? Why did the number change? Give yeah, it, exactly. Give, why did the number change? It is on bonds. Like, why, I think it might be in the premium um, amortization. Constant. It's constant principal. principal. So as it declines, the base principal. But they ought to have shown that anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's, that's my point. Yeah. This, right. this came from Andrea. Okay. I don't think it came from the schools. Original number in the budget. Yeah. I mean, it's the minutes, but I'm just saying, like, this is just, we should know this for 10 years. Yeah, yeah that's right. Like, cool. Can I just interject for really quick? Um, they actually put in a, like a $1.3 million ban last year, um, which was now issued. I didn't have the new numbers, um, the final numbers, uh, when I put this proposal together. So that's why they changed. Thank you. Sorry, they did. Can you say that again? They did a what? 
they did a, a band for the remaining portion of the memorial school. So it was like a small band. And I didn't have the final long-term issuance of that until after this book was already published. So they didn't borrow the whole amount until they knew the final, final figure. After final payments from MSBA, et cetera. So they were left short by... That's a that million something. So they then, held off on bonding that last yeah. million and a half or whatever it was. They were short, so they had to go and borrow. Yeah. But purposely short because they wanted to wait. Yeah, you didn't want to overbar. Yep. So one thing I think that is worth just mentioning um, when we go through this again is when they borrowed the first amount for Memorial, it was actually a remarkably good rate. And so, um, and then when the funds came in, basically they generated a fair amount of interest revenue before they actually had to be paid. And we continually pushed and said that should be kept for capital purposes. And I believe, Greg, it was on the order of like 900K. Yes. And so that we pushed pretty hard that that not go to operating issues, that that remained for capital. And that has gone to capital. But at the end of this whole project, the bands are being issued again or were issued to cover the last delta. And when we go through this again with Essex, I think it's really important to follow that strategy again. That, you know, we may have a lot of interest income coming in, or the di district may have a lot of interest, and we ought to be saying that should be allocated toward capital. So it doesn't end up with a big band at the end. To, Mark, so to say we with Essex, you might want to hold off. <laughs> may, yeah, but so to say what you just said it's a different way, and they kind of did overbottle. No. Well, well, from a timing perspective, because oh, otherwise, they would, yeah. Because yeah. they wouldn't have had interest income. Right. So, yeah. I mean, they borrow based on the taxpayers and the need of the project, and fortuitously, right, but nine hundred grand, grand is so. nine hundred grand is a big yeah. number when you're talking about low interest rates. Right. Right. Like that means you back into a big right. base. Mm -hmm. Maybe 32 million. I think that was the original. Um, right, but so what can I use? 4%? Talking about 32 million. Yeah, I'm talking about. I don't know the long term. I mean, some of the numbers pushed around today were 2.5% to 3. So that was on eight years, five years, eight years. The life of a turf field is five years or eight years. But we're probably looking at thirty years on Essex Elementary. Here's where we're going. I'm just high level. Give me three percent just to make my numbers easy. If I take nine hundred grand and three percent, that means they borrow thirty million bucks a year too early. Thirty-two million. I'm telling you. Oh, I got thirty. Thirty-two million two hundred ninety thousand. No, no, but. I'm saying we're moving saying the timing. Obviously, they didn't truly overborrow. It they they right. they that was the, that was the initial bond they took out was the 32 million two hundred and ninety thousand. Right. Right. But I'm just backing into Maury's nine hundred grand yeah. numbers. Yeah. And um and they did that on the advice of their balance bond council, whose estimate was that the interest rates would be going up, the borrowing borrowing early would save. On the rate that they would pay, you know, yeah. rate. Right. because that was when um, the the Fed was was trying to stop inflation. Yeah. And we, there are a lot of people from both towns and the district all involved in that. I mean, that's a pretty group of group discussion, right? And what's done is done, right? We don't have the time machine. I'm going more to your point, right? Three point two eight nine percent interest is what it was. Okay. I'm going more to your point, which is <laughs> interest rates are much higher now. So all the more reason on Essex to, again, not go to borrow. We're we'll borrowing mm -hmm. too much too early from the time. Okay. Um, I don't know if I North Shore Regional Vocational School. Is this number a final number, Greg? The 245-081? Or is it an estimate? Well, that is it. Maybe that's an estimate, right? Right, Andrea, that's still an estimate. We don't have a final. Correct, that's an estimate. And is that adding one person? Yes, it does. 
What's the total enrollment at this point? Uh, I think this is, when I say this is 15. I'm going to say 12. No, no, it's more than 12 because last year it was more than that. Maybe 11 last year. I happened to look at my report and that's why I'm saying I think it was higher, but 245. Yeah, 245. That's going to be one more student. I think it's seven points. This was 19 more. So basically, we're going from like 10 to 11 to 12. From 22 to 23 to 24, right? We added two last year. What was last year's enrollment? I don't know. I have it in my report. Oh, okay. I had it in last year's report, okay. and that's what I that's was I just updating it today. Mm -hmm. so, and I decided this was one additional person. Yeah, I know that we assume one additional. I'm um, sorry that I don't have the total here. It's it's in the low teens, mid, low to mid teens. I just looked up the enrollment for this year for our final assessments, and we're at thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. So this is one more support. So that so that two hundred twenty three grand for fiscal twenty twenty three that like is effectively is an actual. Yeah. So then we're 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 budgeting one additional. Right. Plus a plus a, an increase of the of the individual costs. Do we know how many of what did you say? 13? 13 going to 14. Do we know how many of the 13 are seniors? Yeah, graduating. Yeah. I think we have a senior yet. Really? We didn't have our hadn't even gone in there for a long, long time. We just started yeah, adding people. None of those 13 are seniors. Wow. I don't think it's well, I, I could be wrong. <clears throat> okay. Well, Can we just check? Yeah. yeah. Is that a Jeff Delaney question? You know, rep. Should I, you want to hold on this budget till we get that answer? No. Okay. Do, do I have a motion to approve the North Shore Regional Vocational School in the amount of 245,081? Yes, you do. Peter moves. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mike seconds. Do I have a vote? Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yep. Mike. Yes. And Sarah says yes. I mean, um, if you told me there were seven seniors, obviously I'd want to have a different conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're saying it's either zero or one. Okay. Yeah. Next item was remaining town budgets not yet approved. And we were looking at for additional information on. Um, did you get one of these, Maury? No, I didn't. You don't. Yeah, you don't. Uh, So first category, elections, parking clerk, we were looking for more numbers. Page 76 is elections. So what we had, so what, that 15,000 or 50 number professional services? Yeah. So that's, uh, so that includes um, so it's a roll up of, of three different lines. Yeah. Um, chair rental and the professional services and computer control. Um, it assumes two two town meetings. Um, so the sound, for example, when the sound is about twenty five hundred. The meeting so five thousand of that is 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 for sound. Um, it also pays for the um, poll pads and programming the um, tabulator that counts the ballots. Oh yes. Um, 
So those are the bigger items in that number. And then there's other. But I, I thought that we were supposed to be expecting a decrease because we weren't going to use their people anymore. Right. We so but we but they up their annual fee. So their annual fee is three thousand. Um, basically to subscribe to their service. Sorry, we're talking about the professional services line, right? Yes. Yes. The 15 open. Yes. And so I was you know, when we last talked about it, I was thinking that we might be able to reduce it a bit. Um, but when 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 they reviewed all the numbers, they Covered that fifteen thousand. Yeah, I thought we were going to be able to reduce it because it had to do with the. Yeah, we weren't paying for the, the clicking. We were going to do that in house rather than have them come. Um, but that was already taken into consideration. Was this where we were going to decide whether to go back to the old way of doing beach stickers or not? Because it's not saving money. No, no, no. no. This is collectors. This is that's in, the, that's in the parking clerk budget. We haven't gotten okay. that. We haven't gotten there yet. So, okay, so I had to go back and look, and it, that's already been adjusted. The fact, so then why, why is it doubling? It's sound. Uh, what's that? Did we not include sound before? So I think, I think those expenses have gone up fairly significantly. Which expenses? Sound, um, and uh, so the, the, the service on the clickers doubled, the sound is higher. Um, in, in years past, we, we didn't always have two meetings. So some of your actuals are based on one, not two. Um, so Say that last part again. We, 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 we don't, we, traditionally, we didn't always do two town meetings a year. Right. Um, those, you know, like, like in 22, the actual, we had a special. Um, we'd have to double check. That's oh, I'm sorry, the budget, you first all, the actual was higher. Um, I'm just saying, when you look at that row, right, 15 grand looks out of whack. 10 would be more. I mean, I guess it is what it is. It's, it's a lot right. of, is this services that if we owned, there is. Oh, I know why it was higher. There's also the primary, the residential primary in here. That's a, that's a four thousand dollar cost right there. So this so is we have two town meetings and a presidential primary. Two town and, and the town and the town election. So yeah, this included the so there'll be a presidential primary next a year from now, um, which is in this budget. It wasn't in last year's. No. Didn't we have a general election last year? We have a governor here. Well, I don't know. It's the um, state. The midterms. We don't have a governor. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so I, I, I got my answer. Three elections. Okay. At the end of the day, if it's too high, you know, this is what it is. Do, do I have a motion to approve the election registrations budget in the amount of $27,700. So moved. I'll Andy second. Moves. Mike seconds. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Sarah Bruce. Next is parking clap clerk. Adrian Johnson, 79. 79, that's question here was printing and everything. Mm -hmm. Dog dads added. That computer control number. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, so you can see we, we jumped um, in, in 22, so last. So, yeah, the, the computer control number is consistent with the actual in 22, but the question was on the printing and advertising. The jump up to 4,000, and I had a note saying maybe it was dog tags added. 
I can answer that. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> um, Diane moved uh, the amount that we pay for the beach passes um, to printing and advertising since they're not like the resonant stickers for your cars aren't beach passes anymore. So she moved it from that line down below the beach passes to printing and advertising. Okay. Um, and that also includes dog tag purchases as well. Okay. Uh, so yeah, your 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 bottom the last <clears throat> line dropped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, increased on, on on that part. Okay. And the beach passes is the walk on tags. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Ready on this one? Okay. So. Well, I have a. Okay. So. The. The beach passes have gone way down though. Right, because she used to include the beach stickers that you had to put on your car right, you had right. to pay for on that line, and now it's up in the printing and advertising line. Well, she moved lines for lines. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I have a motion to approve the parking clerk budget in the amount of $33,590,549. Yes. Okay. Andy moves. Do I have a second? second. Peter seconds. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Sarah, please. The next was... Let's go to treasurer, 91 through 92. Uh, we were waiting for a final number of health insurance. And right. I'm, I'm still waiting for that. I should have it by the end of this week. I had a note saying adjust per December 22nd number. Number of employees we're hiring more now in public, no, so that I I get my good. note. So we don't have the price yet. I don't have the new notes for next year. I was hoping that I would have that for this for today, but I don't. So pass. How do we, how do we look for this year? Um, we're gonna we're gonna spend every dollar most likely. So you read it with them. And does this take into account new positions? Yeah. Does it do that? I think that's why we have to further. Thank you. So, so my hope is that we're coming in a little lower than eight, but that the new positions, that number will, should be pretty much where it is, is what I'm hoping. So the answer is we'll try to include them, but we're just not sure the underlying reads one more. So are we going to have more information in a week? Yes. Yeah. Oh, with that. Okay, so we'll hold. Okay. They said by February at the latest, so it's it's February. It's February. And when you include new positions, you're including four. Is it, it, it um, well? I don't know how you do that. Yeah. It's it's a it's, it's a net of well, it's a net of two, not three. Oh, sorry, it's a net it's a net of one because we were paying for three already. What do you mean? The, dispatch. the dispatchers. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Um, somewhere I thought I saw like you're adding in some decent sized number for new new hires, no? Is that crazy? I thought I remember seeing like 140 grand or something. Right. Okay, but but that, that wasn't a net number, that was just a uh, that's a gross. That's 35 grand. It's 30 grand a pop. Right. All benefits, all in. All, assuming, assuming family plan, Medicaid, care, and bank loan, pension. Okay. You're going ultra conservative, which is fine, but just you know, the probability that everybody comes on with the family is not. Yeah, and we've, um, we did see a number of uh, new families join this year. The spouses, you know, their, their plan wasn't as attractive anymore, and they, they switched over. 
that ate up. I mean, usually, I usually we have some left over here, um, but not this year. Do you want that's why I think we should look at that, you know, the paying the off out thing, right? Because we only use that in very limited, certain, what may your union contracts or no, something. Right. We do have that as, as an option in our contracts. Not many people are taking advantage of it. Because maybe the dollars is too small. And given how much it costs, you know what I mean? <laughs> we should look at maybe dial length. Especially if you're knee deep in negotiations right now. If, if 35K is the worst case, do we have a sense of what's the average case? Like if you just look across all town, like really is here and that you can see about 35 or is it 30? 30 30. 30. Yeah. So what are you adding in that? You're adding healthcare. Healthcare pension, those are the two big ones. Unemployment, unemployment, yeah. which is Even we actually have separate line items. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's not all in this line. I'm just saying that's what he was talking about. We talk, we talk about the cost of a person. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I'm just to Morris point. It shouldn't be in the thirty or thirty-five. Then if it's if there's a separate row somewhere up, you know what I mean. If we have a row in there. The work thing is the total roll up from like FICA, Medicare, workers' comp, all that rolls up to about 30K per employee, Perfect. but it's paid out of different lines. Yes. 100% agreed. Yeah. So then all I'm saying is when you had this 140 grand, if I'm remembering it right, before new, that equals 35 a pop, right? 35 a person, right? And I thought I saw that. Um, I don't know. Whatever. I, it just seemed like maybe a little bit of double pattern, but it's on small numbers, so I don't care. Okay. So we we'll get you a firm number on health and choice. <laughs> Building department. <laughs> Page 89. Thank you. Now, at a prior meeting, we were talking about building and planning, and we were going to go back and look at it and see if there was a way to get more support somehow. That's that, these numbers don't look like they've changed. So, that, yeah, that, um, um, so my, my recommendation is that we. We stay with what we have in terms of staffing here, but that if we need additional um, inspectional support on a particular project, then it be done through the special permitting process. Maybe I don't condition. agree with that. No, I know you don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you have the control and I don't think you have the oversight you really need. It's not just one special permit or another, it's big building projects. They might not have needed a special permit. It might just be a straightforward building permit, but they spend two or three years on it and they have an initial inspection and a final and nobody's looking at it during all that interim time. You have violations that people are cited and Six months or a year later, they go back and do it again and nobody catches it. And, and the building department is relying on citizens to bring the complaints forward. And I don't think that's right. Yeah, I'm 100% I'm and I would add on to that. I know I got corrected, I think, by you about population difference between Rockport. So I had to go look it up. They're only 25% bigger. So they've got, you know, double the building inspector and they're only 25% bigger. So again, I'll stand by my original statement. Either we're understaffed or they're overstaffed. Right, one one or the other. And further to Sarah's point, you know, I've this is anecdotal, but I've had interactions and I can just tell that there's not the bandwidth and or the prioritization. I mean, I you know, I, so that adds on top of everything Sarah said. There's also so the, the, in terms of inspections, you know, there's standard building, there's footing inspection, foundation inspection, rough in after it's been insulated. 
after the installation is closed, and then final inspections. So by our current building inspector. Our current building inspector. So what about the lapidated decrepit buildings that need to be condemned and addressed and stuff like that? So that's board of health. How do they know? Do they go out and look? see? This is the problem. We have nobody walking around town and looking at anything. No, no town has that. I I, I started with Board of Health on that, and I ended up with the building inspector. So I'm actually surprised you said that. If it's if it's if the health has it, it's going to be. I agree. No, I didn't know where to go. I went health first. I ended up with inspector. It's a safety hazard, not a health. It's, it's, you know, it's a construction construction, construction issue. issue. I think it's what he's talking about, right? I didn't know where to go. I went both. So you're only where I ended up. So Greg, you're resistant to having a full-time building inspector. Just don't think it's worth this. I'm not sure what a full is there. Like is going to do. But I guess I, mean, I, I was hoping to combine it with fire inspections. I mean, I, that, that, that path got. Uh... Let me call on Becky. She has her hand up. Go ahead, Becky. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I, I have a, a lot of concerns um, regarding the staffing of the building department. And I have to agree with Sarah and Mike. I think that, um, I think we need more help, um, especially because I just don't think it's right that um, neighbors have to be the ones who um, are responsible for policing um, what's going on. And I, I have um, looked for, um, and over a list of projects that we have going on, uh, where they are in the, um, the uh, sorry, I lost a word, uh, permitting process. Um, and I just, I really feel we're understaffed. Uh, and then partly because there's, there's so, so little teeth. Um, that's, that's all I wanted to say. I think we're understaffed in the building department. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm usually the last person to be arguing for more. <laughs> more staff. So if I'm arguing for more staff, maybe maybe it's worth a listen. What if we also get him trained as a call firefighter? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've had to make three calls on the property next door to me. Um, and I shouldn't have to. It's, and it's like nobody has a clue what's going on. Well, I, so mine was twofold. Number one, I didn't want to be the police report, but then the level of <laughs> customer service I got was yeah. less than that. Yeah, so I have a broader view on this in terms of whether we need a full time person. Uh, I know I know Becky's point of view, Ann and John. Do you have a broader sense of this? I do have a sense because um, I also sit on the Historic District Commission. Um, I'm curious, you mentioned there are about five or six different checkpoints yeah. in any construction. And if all of those are done, how are these complaints coming down the pipe? It seems that the inspector should be out there every two or three or four weeks with another step that he's got to look at before the builder can proceed. Normally, that's true. Normally. Um, during COVID, construction was really dragged down on, on a few cases. Um, they were sitting, you know, contractors were waiting for supplies or waiting for labor, or they just shut down for a while. Um, so it was a little slower in, in COVID, for sure. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I can agree with the other comments that I hear that yeah, we're, we're people are not out, or the inspector is not out as much as we think he is as as frequently because maybe these things are dragged on, and of course, an agency is going on every day, and as a result, we've got these uh, problems. So there's insufficient oversight of the activities one way or the other, whether it's being dragged out. If it's being dragged out, maybe an inspector needs to make checks when there aren't necessarily events that are going on because. There's something else going on if it's taken so long. Um, but there's, there is a problem. There's no question. And Even if you're coming so, at it purely dollars and cents, isn't there a cost-benefit argument in the sense that potentially you're lowering legal fees? 
right? I mean, I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm just, I hear a lot of lawsuits. I hear a lot of legal fees, and I know a lot of, not really a lot, some of it's, a lot of it's related. Well, we, you know, we, for instance, we had a sports court out on Bridge Street where he doubled the size of it. A neighbor complained. So he came forward for a special permit. Then there was a fight. It was approved. Then it was appealed to the courts, and then it was withdrawn. And Nobody had a clue in town that this guy had doubled the size of a sports court over and above what had been approved in 2012. I mean, you know, this wasn't recent stuff, but it's uh, things are happening all over town. And we're not on top of things unless a neighbor complains and neighbors don't like to complain. Mm -hmm. um, Is that a situation where we should have gotten a permit? And, just yes. went ahead, and he just went ahead and... He just did it. He needed to have a modification of the special permit. He just did it. I mean, at a minimum, maybe there needs to be just better communication with the assessor's department. Because I remember talking with Ginny back in the day, and she was telling me how she spends X thousand dollars on, like, GPS drone to, like, make sure she catches every shed, garage, blah, 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 is getting built in town. And I don't know, maybe, <laughs> you know, just communicating that information, you know, building inspector, then I, I don't know. So I think it would warrant um, a few of us sitting down and, and trying to map out what, what is really the problem. Is, it, is, it, is more hours the solution or is it a different approach or is there something something else? I'm not, personally, I'm not convinced it's a question of hours. Maybe it's not, but I think to your point, it may there not needs to be a discussion to get yeah. at the root of the issue. It may not require an issue. more building inspector hours, but it requires more controls so that we know what's going on. And we have, I mean, it's like ADUs are approved. Um, we had one on Central Street. It was for a mother. And they said she's going to be an employee. She's going to take care of the kids. The kids are all at college. I don't think she's taking care. I don't think she's an employee. <laughs> you know, nobody's checking on that sort of. There's no follow-up of, you know, we impose rules and then there's no follow-up of anything. And, and I'm sure it's all over town where people have second units and are renting them out and nobody knows unless somebody complains. And if if we're not gonna control it, then we need to get rid of the rules. <laughs> That's Sounds like there's a permitting question, issue, manpower, hours. And then there's an enforcement issue. And I wonder if an inspector is needed to identify things for enforcement. Right. And I will tell you, you drive around town and you see a backhoe creating a septic field and there's no DEP thing. You don't need to be a certified person to say that we ought to look at this a little more carefully. Right. Or, you know, a 32 foot ridge pole on a house is suddenly 45 feet. You know, it's like, Okay, somebody ought to ask about this. Um, so. right. I know when we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, there was some concern about even finding people. And I guess my take on this is we're, um, we're relying on a person who's employed by Rockport, but working part time for us. And if that person decides to go to Florida or do something different, where do we end up? And um, I think Kevin access to other people is important. Might take a year to get there, but we ought to work on that, I would think. Sarah, if I may. Yes, Becky, sorry, I'm not very good at watching for hands. No, 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 no. Um, I, I wanted to just also say that, that we, you know, we talk about succession plans and, to Maury's point, um, 
what we have is part-time Paul. And if he goes, we don't have someone who's in the lineup and being trained. That's that's a consider big, I think, consideration. And um, again, I just don't think it's right to have to put the responsibility on a butters to have to be the the bad guys here. It's it's if we're giving permits, it's our responsibility to be making sure that what's being done is what's been permitted. It's not the neighbors to be snapping photos and um, having to get into contentious situations. My feeling. Also, to the legal legal aspects, I, it's that's a very costly um, element, and I would dare say that that could easily exceed a salary. Thank you. Inspector. Question. So yes, whose responsibility, or is there anybody's responsibility for making sure that people get permits when they're supposed to get permits? Well, nobody, nobody's this is kind of an honor system. I mean, this is what I feel is probably half the problem. People just decide to do stuff. Now, I understand that contractors know when permits are supposed to be pulled. And if they just kind of say, ah, we can take care of this. And, Nobody asks any questions. And then the next question that gets asked is from a neighbor. Right. And I don't know what you do about that. It's a challenge. Does the current part-time building inspector have any view on this in terms of the pieces that are missing or unable to be attended to? Has anybody asked him what, what his recommendation is here? Right. Will you help me here with that question? Well, I mean, um, Paul feels like that even though sometimes it takes time, mm -hmm. but issues are eventually caught and adjudicated and corrected. Um, you know, we, it, the system is designed that we react to an event. Uh, that's just that's the way the law is structured. We can't proactively, you know, say we, we think you're about to build something you're not supposed to. <laughs> what does he think of? Well, how does it strike him when neighbors step forward? I mean, he, he feels as though that's the appropriate way to get well, that's the, one the system to react. Not, it's not the only way. You, you certainly um, follow up and, and if you feel something is in, is not. Mm -hmm. co complying with the permit, then you will. Wait, how does he come to know that? How do you even one suspect of his that? So uh -huh. He's doing one of his inspections, so you'll see that. Certainly at a final inspection, mm -hmm. and people get frustrated with that because they think it's it's too late, mm -hmm. um, but things get corrected. Um, and you know, if someone doesn't like his decision, that's always appealable mm -hmm. to, the, to the ZBA. Um, and I, you know, the, the track record, he's got a very good track record. He's had very few of his decisions overturned. Um, so, so it's, I think it's a question of perception and degree. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe, you know, it's a combination of some additional hours, but also of, of I think we'd benefit from a full-time administrative person for land use for land management, um, rather than rely on the, you know, the multiple part-time mm -hmm. folks we have. Because th there's some, th there are times when there are, isn't someone you can talk to, uh, whether you're looking to file a permit or or what. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like the idea of moving towards that. Um, would that be under the town planner? Could do something like that, land management. Right, that. you could. Yes. It'd be difficult. Um, you know. You, um, you, we have a retirement coming up also in, in conservation, so yeah. I do see if you move towards a full-time administrative 
person for, for land management purposes, and then a combination agent, conservation agent, and, and, and town planner. Um, that to me creates a, a good office. And then um, you know, if you want to have a full time building inspector, that building inspector would be part of that, mm -hmm. that effort as well. Um, you know, half to full time for the, for the building inspector. So I, I, um, I think I heard you say along the way that you thought maybe that there's just like a small group of people that maybe should <clears throat> study the issue and carry it forward. I think it'd be worth sitting down yeah. with, you know, perhaps uh, um, you know, Becky and Sarah and myself and, yeah. and someone else want to sit down and yeah. sit down with Paul and yeah. sort of go over these concerns and see see what answers, solutions might be. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, yeah. That seems reasonable. I just have a question. I mean, I wonder if it's been explored, but are there fines and fees for misbehavior? And I mean, I'm I'm thinking of an analogy like the Department of Revenue. You know, yeah. you don't declare something, you're running a serious risk that you're going to have fees and interest and everything else, and it tends to straighten out behavior. He, he, I wonder he, if that's he, an option here. Or is it yeah. So you pay double on your permits if, <coughs> if it's after the fact. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect of it. But, but no, there's a thing if you if there's a cease and desist order, if there's an enforcement order from the building inspector and you don't follow it, you're gonna be fined $300 a day. And we had that with a situation out on Summer Street. And to the best of my knowledge to this day, it's still being violated. Um, when you walk by there, there's- So there's some huge fine accumulating, but it's like- Well, no, it's, it has to be imposed. Um, and it has to be paid. But there was an issue about the number of cars parked on a specific lot that exceeded the number allowed. And they just kept doing it. Um, and I I don't go by that area very often, but my every time I go by, I said, geez, it looks like more than is allowed. So there's no teeth, basically. Like, right, yeah. yeah. There's just not enough people to devote to dealing with that type of situation you know i mean at one level it's like you know it's like having the right people in the workman's comp pool to run the company. If, you, if you don't do that right you get killed <laughs> so can you raise the the penalty bar here so that people are pushed toward a level of honesty and if they don't the town benefits financially now i don't know if that's legal but maybe that would solve some of this so if somebody's well, going to keep paying the fine and keep violating, I don't know what the end result is. Well, eventually you make a lot of money. I was going to say, if you pay the fine, the town gets money. I'll take that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think there's a planning item here that I don't think we can handle in this group, which is, I think, needs to follow what you put forward, which is, sounds like there's a whole planning thing about mm. a number of positions and some turnover retirements. That's going to lead to, I think, a maybe a more effective combination of staff members. So, um, so we want to. There, there's, enough, there's enough money in the budget to deal with that. To deal with it. I, 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 the so there's enough money in the budget for example, to go to a full-time inspector, combined plan and uh, uh, no, and, and, no. and have a full-time administrator. Um, so there is enough there uh, to make a change, mainly because we'll, the changes, some of those changes won't happen until mid year. Yes, exactly. Because That's where the money, I, that, that timing will come up. Yes. Timing yeah. helps in yes. that situation. But I would incline me to go ahead with what's being requested here. Okay. And, you know, let the planning Do I get have underway. A motion. Right? To approve the building department budget in the amount of $104,887. Yes, you do from me. So I have a second. I'll second. Andy seconds. Vote. Maury. Yes. Andy. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tom. Yes. Dean. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Sarah Bruce. Um. 
planning page 99. Do I have a motion to approve the planning budget in the amount of $110,282? So moved. Andy moves. Do I have a second? Oh, okay. 99. 99. Why were we holding on this before? Yeah, what was reason before? Why did we hold it? It was dealing with this building inspector. I question. see. Okay, so it's back to the same issue. Yeah. yeah. Because you, it's a part time planner. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, do I have a second? Second. Tom seconds. You ready to vote? Yes. Maury? Yes. Indy? Yes. Peter? Yes. Tom? Yes. Dean? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Sarah votes yes. So, this assumes full time planner, even though right now it's part time? Right. Well, so this could, going this could change. Mm -hmm. We may. We may ask you to approve some transfers mm -hmm. um, you know, if you come up with a different model. Yeah. Which is always the knowledge of from, right. from a real world forget budget perspective, yeah. what is the likelihood that that changes from the part-time current situation to like in other words in the next, I don't know, three months do you see it changing or six months or within six. Probably. So okay. within six you envision Part time person go away into full time, or the part time becomes full time, or combining the two things I think he's talking about. Oh, okay. Well, this assumes you go full time. Combining? Right. Creating a new position, mm -hmm. combining responsibilities of separate positions now, like conservation agent, town planner. And right. this isn't that what's being right. presented here? Yes. Yes, it's, it's the last page. The last it. page as a scenario where. Yep. Okay. It's it's the restaffing uh, of the concept. The concept of restaffing. The concept. Of, um, okay. So that shows a full time building yes. inspector, combined planner, agent, and contract agent, and then a full time admin system. So it seems to me we need to begin to think about whether we are implement this. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does the con con agent do? Oh, so the, the <laughs> process of all the applications for the conservation commission and does follow up and site visits and site visits. Yeah. I mean, well, I've had all that at my place. Site visits, yeah, a lot of those things. Advice, and I've been on the phone to her. So, this is like if you're gonna like build near wetlands, yeah, or yep, yep. yep. Or sometimes if you're building with an Asian garden in your back exactly. yard and GIS looks like it's water. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Holds up the permit for four months. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, I I would like to circle back a little bit about fire. Um, so it meeting we had joint meeting we had with the select board select board voted for two full-time firefighters and reducing the having a small all firefighter amount um Finance committee voted to have a larger call firefighter amount and not have the two right. call firefighters. Um, and I think the question is, is, is the difference in cost such that we want to fight it on town meeting floor? So in your packets. Yeah. The fire. Is a, is a new fire page. Yeah. Um, it's third to the last. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Do, does the plant does the um select board have that new page? No. Yeah. No, okay. you have that there. I'm sorry. No, no, no. All right. Right there. And maybe you can put it on the screen. 
I, I volunteered that area. I'm not sure. <laughs> so easy if you no have problem. Can you help us understand the adjustments that are yeah, being made? Yeah, that's So what, what the adjustments are, are, are in red here. Yeah. Um, so the first adjustment is, is adding two new firefighters, so 70K a piece, so 140,000. And then um, we also added, uh, we assumed, we remember we, we basically cut the number in half on the, on the call. So this assumed three call firefighters at uh, at six thousand a piece, mm -hmm. so that's why we've added eighteen thousand here. And we and our the our option that we voted on was like sixty five thousand dollars. Yeah. So what, 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 what were those dollars. cash dollars spent on? Well, we're talking about call volunteer. Right. So mean number one, when something goes to get changed, the state picks up the town. We were talking about town employees and paying state debts. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, and then the other adjustment, so you see overtime was originally budgeted at 140,000, but we took 120 away from that, leaving 20,000. Is that real? Because so <laughs> that's happened after, right? right? So so why the big drop? Because if you have if we got four groups of four. Mm -hmm. Anytime one person is on leave, you drop down to three. So you don't have four. So that means three's not the best, but it's okay. They'll deal with it. That's what he said. So right. So yeah. this gives them four, roughly 50% of the time. Yeah. Um, and then if you have a few call people that can fill in those other 50% of the time, maybe you're yeah, maybe you're there. Um, so if you get to the bottom line, you know, the total. Um, it's 46,000 more than the original budget. Correct. Okay. But so much of that is predicated on the huge overtime reduction. Which is, we know. So we've been down that road. I've seen that movie before. You have. Well, many all, times. all we can vote on is what's in front of us. Um, I, I think you know, I, it would be good, you know, as kind of a, a side conversation, though, to understand what are the mechanics of, you know, what was pointed out last meeting where you're being ignored. Well, we, we, we had that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've had it many times. Um, and, you know, there, you'll, you'll hear from them because they'll be dropping down to two now between now and the end of the year. They're not happy about that. They're picking and screaming. Oh, that's why it's all over media. That's why right. it's all over social media. Yeah. Dropping down to two. Dropping down to two. From three. From three. Which is what the prior fire chiefs did. Which is what? Prior fire chiefs did that. They dropped down to two when they were short. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, yes. from three yes. to two versus yes. yeah. three. I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And why is that happening now? Because I don't know what we're talking about. Because of, because we so maxed out the overtime budget. He was on he was, he was on a spend rate that was going to have an overtime budget of three hundred twenty five thousand dollars. When we budgeted one hundred twenty five. Got a problem with that? Yeah. So so we can he'll he'll have some savings and salaries recovered an overage, and I, I would expect the overage to be, I would expect about a $75,000, but he'll have that in salaries. Sorry, you got to say that again. 75 plus the 120 that's already occurred? So let's call that 200. So there's going to be 200 OT for the current fiscal year, but then you're saying there's savings. Salaries. Because of the vacancies. Right, one guy left. Well, we have, we have, we have, we have two leave at the beginning of the year to go out and fill it. Yeah. And now and we have another there. person in the league with that third position. Yeah. Um, and that, that's open right now. So we'll just we'll keep that open for a little while. Yeah. Okay. So the net, the net impact for the current fiscal year. I'm hoping it's pretty minimal. It's pretty minimal. 
Right, they're not, but that is predicated on dropping down to do. Now, we, I don't mean to go into too much into the weeds, but not in this position because when we hired the, the new firefighter paramedics, they were only paramedics. They don't have the, they don't have the training to be, they don't have the firefighter one and two training. That, yeah, my, that was my main takeaway from that last meeting we had. And, that, and that, so, that's an issue, obviously. So when, you had the, when you had the two regular firefighter paramedics and then the new hire wasn't a firefighter, he brought on a fourth, so then he had the three firefighters. And that's what drove the overtime through the roof. Right, because we hired firefighters that weren't firefighters yet. Right. I mean, that's clearly a problem for a small department, right? I, I get that a big department of Boston or Cambridge can do that. They've got enough volume, but we need to be hiring firefighters that are already firefighters. That means we poach them. From a... Really hard to find them. Yeah. Bid it up. I mean, you know. I, I, I mean, these three were all from out of state as it is. New Hampshire. Yeah. So I Cheap think, old stomping ground. I think, I think it's important I think it's an important issue for us, the Fig Common Select Board, to be on the same page. So I, I think it's good that we're talking about it again. I, the way I was thinking about it was, I find it, I find it hard to get by the, you know, the way the information is continually presented to us by the chief. So I was thinking about it a little differently in that. He's, the chief can go whenever, you know, he may decide, you know, he wants to retire, whatever, we get another chief that has a different philosophy. <laughs> um, and, but I, I think, and we've kind of bemoaned, you know, the call firefighter situation, but it is what it is, you know, so we'd like to build it back up and maybe we can, you know, um, we just need to have, you know, the right um philosophy uh, for our leader to be able to do that. But in the meantime, the staffing need is the staffing need. You know, and I, I'm, I'm starting to lean toward just kind of acknowledging that regardless of whatever religion, you know, the current fire chief has. I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I don't think there's as much money difference to make it worth it. Becky, go ahead. If the overtime thing happens. Which right. well, that's a different yeah. That's, 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 that's the right. key part of the equation. And yeah. we know we've been down that this road before where we've been told if we hire a floater, then the, there's this huge negative on the OT. Right. And we've, we've 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 increased two floaters in the past what four years? No, one per year, the last two, two years. years. Yeah. Two, one per year, last two years. Yeah. In both cases, yeah. we were told if we hire a new full-time floater, that would reduce OT. In both cases, that didn't. So we've added two, if we add these two positions, it will be four positions added to the fire department in three years. I, I, I asked Andrew and Greg to pull the last five years of actual total dollars for fire department, right? What we spent, okay? And like, we all know we start the day with two and a half percent, right? On the total budget, that's mm -hmm. where we start, right? We know the school comes in, if we're lucky at three and a half. So we're already in the hole, right? With the whole rest of our department, right? I mean. So at the end of the day, we've increased the fire department budget 4.8% per year over the past five years. So you just start to think about the math. You start with two and a half. The school, which represents half our total, is taking three and a half. And now this department is 4.8 each year. Like, it breaks, yeah. right? It just, it breaks. Like, we're here not to say yes to everything. We can't say yes to everything. The math doesn't work. And mm -hmm. so I just don't get how in the same year we're going to add two new full-time police officers. We've added two new full-time firefighters in the past two years. We got a 5.7% increase in the school department budget. I, I I just don't get how we can just keep saying yes to everything. We're new full-time well, board help. Like, part, of, part of the and these are numbers I'm trying to get to put into the annual report is um the offset of, for instance, the new firefighters being offset by the savings. In dispatch and savings in reduction in reserve officers. That's different from fire. Mm -hmm. But um, police, I think we're going to see that by the time you get to the bottom, the two new aren't costing that much because of the savings in dispatch. I just don't have those numbers yet. Yeah. Well, 
but I'm just saying 4.8% a year over five years. That's a lot. In our third biggest department, right? Schools, police, fire. You know, and the schools coming in three and a half, sorry, 5.7% this year. And what we're saying is we might have a little work around where we actually increase taxes 4% because we can, because we didn't increase it two and a half percent two years ago. I mean, okay, fine. That's a one trick pony, right? <laughs> You know, we, we should be living within two and a half percent, you know, I mean, so. Well, with the excess levy, using excess levy capacity, we are living within the two and a half percent because we didn't increase it for a number of years. So that's the theory. I, 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 don't know. I can argue that one both ways, yeah. but um, end of the day, you know, you can't point? be spending 4.8 percent per year and three and a half to four on the schools and, and expect that. and expect to hit two and a half. It doesn't work. Um, Becky, did you want to say something? I did. I just, um, in terms of of the fire department, um, and and the hiring that the chief has done, and hiring people who are not actually ready to be complete firefighters, if he's been given or potentially being given the go ahead for two more. What is the assurance that he'll get people ready to go? How do we, how is that right. guaranteed or ever seen? Prioritize firefighters over paramedics at this point. <clears throat> that was the point I was making at the combined meeting was that we have three firefighters we just hired that aren't fully trained yet. And that we should be looking at getting those trained before we start and implement them into the rotation and then find out what's going on. So that was my justification for putting off. It's not that I don't think, you know, the fire needs attention, but I think that timing, we, we would like to get these three trained and then look at hiring more. Or further to that, if you did approve, if you did approve two new firefighters and he did the same thing and hired two new firefighters that aren't firefighters. You haven't really fixed the problem. Right? And that's where he says the overtime problems come, come in when he has to pull those people so they can go get the training. Right. The, well, the problem is they're, they're only qualified to do A, B, and C they're and not, not, in training. Exactly. not A through G. He's been using overtime long before he's trained these people. They haven't gone to academy yet. Right. They can't cover the OT for a, for, for a firefighter because they can't do a lot of the firefighting activities, right? right. So... Is a back way around this to change the training budget. So reduce the training budget so that you can train one person a year or something. No, they don't. We don't. Do we pay for training? We pay their salary while they're in yeah. training. Yeah. So we're okay. not paying for training. Yeah. The only way this could even possibly make sense to me is you said prioritize firefighters over paramedics. It has to be stronger than that. Like the only way you would authorize this is like. You are hiring legit firefighters that can hit the ground running. They've been through the academy. They can do A through Z. Like otherwise, it makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, it's it's so, an odd phenomenon. It's the only public safety is the only profession I know where you get a job and then you go get your certification. Yeah, but firefighters do switch departments. Like, no, they do. But but it happens all the time in police. You hire someone and you send them to the academy. It's just I've I've always. Scratch my head on that. And for a big department, I guess I can wrap my head around that, but not for a little yeah, one. No, it's you really hard for a small department. Around. It's really hard. Right? It's absolutely so right. so I, 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 yeah, I, I have a question. So you're hiring a person for the same amount of money, whether they're fully trained or not trained. Right. Is mm -hmm. that the budget here? <laughs> and that kind of is, I think, uh, a key part of the problem here. Um, if you if if you throw another ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars on a salary, now do you get a fully trained person? It seems. I mean, the problem here is that we got to send all these people away, and then you got to cover that time somehow. Yes, and that's what that's what's driving. It's even worse than that. The fact is, is they can't cover the shift now, so that we're paying overtime because they're not qualified. And then we're going to pay their salary once they go to training. That's yes, I, yeah. I, I mean, you got nobody to turn to for for all of this extra stuff. So I, I'm just wondering if, it, if if you say okay, if we jack this number up, 
And I don't know if you even can do that because you've got unions to deal with and you've got other people in the department that says he's getting paid what? Well, you'd have to jack up everybody. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so we're or in a decrease, decrease the salary for the people you hire who aren't trained. Yes. I have two classes, basically. Yeah. You, and uh, that seems reasonable to me. I mean, you come in based upon what your, what your knowledge base is and your, your qualifications are. And However, these people are train, right part of the problem is we train and then they leave. How many times uh, does that happen now? So, well, so Greg, could you all... Just theoretically, could you authorize the hiring of two new full-time firefighters with the condition that they have to have yeah. been, they have to be firefighters that have already gone through the academy? Right. right. They, they, take, they take longer, but yes. It's like, a, it, it's a binary, either it happens or it doesn't. Right. You cannot go option three, which is... But you'll have to deal with only two being available while all of that's happening, that hiring of a year is happening. I mean, we're still stuck with an understaffed no, situation. No, because... <clears throat> But you, you're, it takes you a year to, or it takes you a long time, whatever it is. But you still have the staff we have today. But they're not qualified. You know, they, 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 they will be by July. Will be by July. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be That's by July. That's a long time. Current away. hires. <laughs> yeah. Current people. Where would we be right now if we had made that condition with those recent hires? In other words, had hired people that had already gone through the academy so they could hit the ground running. Still looking? <laughs> looking. Maybe we'd hire five, seven, July. <laughs> hey, you would have had as much overtime. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Is that it? That's the only impact? We wouldn't have had as much overtime? What, what if there's yeah. like a sign? In terms of coverage, coverage. In terms of all that other logistical stuff. You, 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 you would have had your three. We would have been good, yeah. yeah it's an idea. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I'm making the assumption that so dollars and cents. We already have the other two paragraphs. Dollars and cents would be better because of the OT, and then just operationally, logistics wise, we'd be better because that three thing would work. <laughs> but it, it's harder to get your paramedic certification right. than it is your fire. So that. That's, that's the problem. That's part of the problem. That's why there's a bias towards hiring the paramedics, is it's easier to get them trained as a fire rather than the other way around. I see. So it's, it's, a, it's a bigger to get your paramedic. But again, they leave. How many times? I mean, did, haven't they said that? Didn't the chief say that? So it's happened. Is it possible to have employment contracts? We haven't had that many people leave in that department. Well, we've had recent recent people who've been trained and then left. Not very many. Not, not that many. Well, one did, right? That we heard one years ago. One oh, we have. I mean, lasted a, a month or two because he decided that firefighting it wasn't his thing. He was oh, never he, trained. He was a paramedic. And yeah. He said, you know what? I just want to be a paramedic. I don't want to be a firefighter and a paramedic. I see. It was, it was the, okay. He came to the conclusion that it wasn't the right fit. That, that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, the other two, that one was a retirement, and the other one went to a bigger department where there was more promotional okay. opportunities. I see. Um, now I'm wondering though, if we go from 300k to 20k, based on what this year and next year, um, if that comes out, all these firefighters are going to feel like they're getting a pay cut because they're not getting the overtime they used to. So, to, and that might inspire them to leave as well. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking that maybe one new one and keep the overtime up a little bit. It's too drastic a reduction. With, with, the, with the schedule they work. Yeah. They've all got second, second jobs. careers. Okay, so uh, they're looking they're, to they don't keep like, the overtime. They, they're not jumping up and down to get overtime. Okay, <laughs> well, if that's... This is a blanket general statement, but it's accurate for every job out there. We need to be really blank and careful on who we hire, right? We need to make sure we get the right people, right? I mean, just like with our police, right? Like, the person that wants to become a police officer in this town is different than the person that wants to be a police officer in Boston, right? You don't want to hire that guy for this job because they'll get bored, they'll leave. I got to believe it's same on fire, right? Like, someone that wants to be a firefighter in Lawrence doesn't want to be a firefighter here. Like, you know, we just need to be, I don't know, really careful. Yeah. Um, 
what we really have is an ambulance department that fights fires. This is true. So hiring somebody with a paramedic, he's he may not be able to fill a shift to the chief's satisfaction, but he's actually going to be doing the stuff that that department does. Right. And he's trained for it. So I, it would be wonderful to find people with both. But if you have a choice between hiring somebody who's a trained paramedic and can actually do the rescue and, and um, um, you know, bring people back to life, um, versus somebody who is a firefighter um, where we, you know, get a call a month. If that, yeah, every other month, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, assuming that you know, the chief stay with us and they get trained, um, you know, you'll, you'll have your minimum of three firefighters on every, on every crew. Right. And then, so the next, the next few hires, if that was critical. You gotta say that again so I can say that again. So right now we have 14. Yes. We have 14 full-time. Full-time firefighters. Two, two still have to go to the academy. I'm sorry, three have to two have to go to the academy with one unknown because we haven't hired them yet. Okay. So, so we have know. 13 on board. One open. So there's okay. So there's eleven, two plus one. Yes. Right? Yeah. 11 are good and good. Two are two yet, to, will, yet will, to go to the... Two will be good by July. end of June. So they're in the academy? Not yet. Will be, they'll, they'll have graduated from the academy by... And then one is an open rep. Yes. We're, we're trying to hire now. Open rep. Yes. Yep. Okay. So... That's my math, right? <laughs> That gives us three for each of the four shifts. Yes. And an extra. And an extra. So 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 then you hire two two more. You get to, to 16. And it's not as critical because we we got the three minimum, is all I'm saying. As soon as we get this this current batch fully trained. No. To, to, We've got enough to have three on all of them. To say what you're saying a different way, if all 14 had done everything, all the open rec was hired and, and had been to the academy and these other two had been in the academy, you had 14, good is good, then that 14 covers three. But we're still all of overtime. If that's three without any vacation. Uh, you're not right, counting right. any time off at all. It's just right. straight up. It's, 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 well, it's, it's, it's a lot of overtime and dollar. So 200. Like just more than it costs to hire. See, I think the problem is, is when you're talking public safety, if you're talking about using overtime to cover a person on a shift, it's less expensive to have a person being paid straight time than paying it time and a half. That's the problem. Um, and that's why we it's have the right challenge. Um, it's different in other areas where you're using overtime just to do extra work. Whereas in the public safety is just your back set. Filling, yeah. Whereas in DPW, we don't back, if someone's out sick, we don't back you. Right. We just go without that person that day. Mm -hmm. So you use overtime for emergency. But you know, use overtime for a snowstorm or yeah. you know, a windstorm or whatever. It's, it's, it is a different animal. This is what we affectionately call the denominator problem. It's yeah. not level service. It is when somebody's out, the service increases. <laughs> And, and essentially it's backfilled with, rather than saying we're gonna go with less service for a while, it's always maintaining the same level of service irregardless of cost. Right. And that's how you get to 200,000 in right. six months. Correct. Is that and why the curve is going like this. Does that 14 include the chief or no? No. It doesn't. Hmm. Shouldn't the chief be considered as part of a backfill? Or? He's not part of a shift. Well, he's for eight hours a day, five days during the week is not. Yeah. 
Okay. okay. Whatever 16 hours of the day and his nap on the weekends. Okay. Fair enough. But for those 40 hours? Those 40 hours, you can be a fourth or a third. I think we tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> well, yeah, like, I mean, if I'm just, if you count him as a, a third for those 40 hours, that does something, doesn't it? Wouldn't that bring you 200 grand overtime down to? It, it brings it down so, uh, so then, then contractually with the union, it's difficult to, to get them to agree to do partial shift. And so the issue there is what the eight to five shift that he does doesn't marry up with mm -hmm. uh, uh, eleven to seven or whatever. Right? Twenty four hours a day. Yeah, Twenty four hour shifts. So if a floater gets called in because they're down one, it's for a twenty four hour shift. Yeah. It's for a twenty four hour shift. You know, it's a two hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's to your point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I get not not upending a person's regular twenty four hour shift, but if you're trying to, extra. if you're trying to fill backfill and you have to do an eight hour and a sixteen, that doesn't seem as it doesn't seem egregious. And Greg, there's no such thing as a temporary fire department for what we get ourselves to July or to late June, whatever it is. I mean, there's no such, you know, in some industries you can bring in some temps to fill the tab. Or per diem type. Yeah, per diem. There's no such thing in this area, right? Um, because if July is so, or late June is, is, is a benchmark that will give us, I think, better compliance, better staffing. We can't right. get there for the next three months or four months. To, the way you get better staffing is just to give more money for overtime. I see, I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> that is an option. You could, in that April town meeting, you could appropriate more hundred thousand dollars and say, yes, put three on, make sure there's three on in July. Yeah. How, how far so, back do you have to go when we work too long? How far back? Yeah. What'd you ask? Um, how far back do you have to go when we were doing the thing on six years? No, Maybe. just before this chief. Yeah, Beard soon dropped yeah. down to two. We didn't have the two floaters. Oh, no, no, but I thought he was. No, Beard Sweet. Yeah, I would think. Ripplinger was pushing for it hard. He was. Right. And then he left, and then didn't we have Beard Sweet? Yeah, we had Beard Sweet before and then yeah. Beard Sweet after. Right. But, yeah. but Hemlinger was down to two, I think. We've been running on two forever. I mean, they was we had, had a bigger call. staff the three, but we dropped down we to two. We had a big call. bigger call. Yeah. Right, we airport. had call. Yeah, which gave the protection for the fires. So, is there no real option other than just firing the two? I don't think we're going to resolve it tonight. Um, I I think we have to make a decision. By next week, we have to be able to vote on these budgets. I have to have final numbers in order to get a report done <laughs> for us to get to the printers by March 7th. Um, and Greg, your recommendation was to hire the two full time, right? Yes. And we need to discuss the capital. Finish. I have to do that next week, yeah. yeah right, not tonight. No, I. <laughs> So much we're getting out early. I know. Um, but it was good to talk about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless we have come to a decision about the number of firefighters and we can make the decision tonight, we can do it. But we've talked about it for a long time, and I don't know if people want to mull it over more or not. I, I would just say, at a bare minimum, whether it's Board of Selectmen or us, to even possibly consider it, it has to be with the condition that they are people that hit the ground running, that have already been to the academy. Because doing it otherwise, I, I think it makes it absolutely no sense. So We've why? never had them hired like this before. Is that a realistic thing? Necessity's the mother of invention, right? It's longer to hire. Not just as long. Yeah, it takes longer to hire. I think we should go ahead with the decision of two. Yeah. On that condition. 
And because I don't think there really ends up with a choice. I mean, what's to mull? I'm trying to think what I'm going to mull. I was going to say, we are going to repeat this effort next week. Yeah, I can hear us talking about the effort we've already gotten to where we are right now, even though it's not. I'm, I'm fully mulled. <laughs> so we will make a motion we approve too. Yes. Do I have a second? I'll second it. And you will second it. Vote Maury. With yes. the condition that they be hired as firefighters. I'm I'm adding that to the motion. Okay. Uh, With the condition they be hired as firefighters. Maury. You know, it's trained. Andy. Yeah. Peter. Yes. Yes. Tom. Dean. Mike. No. no. Sarah Bruce. Mm -hmm. I approve. So we're going to go with the three. Mike does not approve. Did Mike voted no. Sorry. Yes. Thank right. you. I dozed for a minute. <laughs> well, that was next week. Next week, we need to deal with capital. And how many departments do we still have to do? I'm sorry, can I just ask a mechanics question on that? So this is going to come up as a line item for the town meeting. And the Board of Selectmen may say we approve two firefighters and the finance committee approves two firefighters with a stipulation that they be fully trained. Is that how this gets expressed? All right, let's not go there tonight. All right. Which <laughs> is going to be part of our thank you. It's not a special article. Okay. Um it's just a budget. Okay. All right. So it's a so next week we have to do question. debt. We haven't approved the debt yet. We have capital to approve. Um, we have the treasurer's budget, the police budget, the fire budget. We have, um, we need to look at revenue and funding sources. We need to look at the town meeting warrant articles. We need to discuss the FinCom annual report and content suggestions. <clears throat> That's it. <laughs> and I have published an amended agenda for the 23rd when I added in the FinCom annual report content suggestions. Notice. Because I think that there are some things we want to highlight, and I'd like input from people as to what those things might be. I think that's going to be relatively easy. Well, sir, we have two more meetings before press time. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So I was hoping that if we had, I've spent several days working on revising the report. Um, I haven't been able to comply. I had no numbers. Um, I'm going to be looking for a whole bunch of the numbers on the dispatch situation. Um, yeah. I can send Andrea the kind of the outline of what I ho hope to include. Um, but we'll need the third to, the, on March 2nd to kind of give it a final blessing if we can, maybe with a few edits after that right. so that I can get it to whoever I have to get it to by March 6th. But that's Monday, I think. Yes. Yeah. So we can go to the printers on the 7th. So, and Motion once. Door Motion, yes. <laughs> Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Here's an extra one. Did you get one of these, Anne? No. There's an extra one here. Is it okay if she has it? Thank you all. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Good night. Thank Thank everybody.